Good afternoon, everybody, or depending on what your time zone is, good evening, good morning, or good night. I am Chrysosaurus, and I am alone this time around, uh, as you can see from the empty two slots to my uh, right, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to be trying to at least entertain you all for the next three hours. I am apparently been told that even though my profile picture does show a Pikachu and an Eevee, uh, do note that Pikachu is holding a Nerf gun, not an actual real gun. So that being said, all of our runners have been set up, uh, setting up their time. But time should begin very shortly as everyone is selecting their, their language to be English, except for JLF, who's actually playing the game in French. Well, actually, no, he's playing the game in English. I'm stupid. Uh, uh, I see English up there. It's just because he owns the French version. It's not French. But as we can see, all of our runners... Have start have started. So welcome to Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. We have two race, two runners who are playing on Eevee and one runner playing on Pikachu. Choo. So we're gonna be seeing a couple of fun and interesting differences between the two between the two versions throughout the entire speed run. But if you haven't played this game or haven't seen this game, uh in this game, uh it's a Kanto remake of Pokemon Yellow, but there are a couple of fair differences between the different games. So as we can see, our Racers picking the different boy girl options, and we do actually have a bit of a diversity here. We have boy four for Mocha, girl three for Burner, and boy one for JLF. If for those who have been asking, for those who or just want to know this information, optimally it is seven frames slower to pick a different boy or girl option in each one, since girl three takes, I believe, one, two, three inputs. Uh, it is 21 frames slower, but you know what? I don't think those 21 frames may matter, but who knows? It might matter. It is also, of course, just, you know, different different boy and girl has different RNG. That's absolutely how that works. As we begin, all three of our races is gonna, are going to go to the uh, settings option, and they are going to do adjustments of a few settings. They're going to change the text speed to fast, because... We want the text to go as fast as possible, obviously. Change the battle style to set, therefore it does. the game does not ask us questions every time we want to switch our Pokémon. We want to set move animations off because that is, you know, slow. And we want to skip movies because we do not want, well, to watch any movies because that is, again, we're speedrunning. We're trying to beat the game as fast as possible, and if we can't beat the game as, and movies, I mean, while they are great, some of the cutscenes are fantastic, like the the Cubo cutscene. We're not really going to be yeah seeing. We're not. We don't want to see that cutscene unless one of our runners wants to. In which case, by all means, we, we, we'll absolutely wa watch that cutscene together. And I think we, the entire chat will be happy if every if we do see one of those cutscenes play off in its entirety. But until then, we're not gonna worry about that, and we're gonna worry about our Pokemon coming right up. Which is, of course, going to be our starter for the entire game. If you pick, if you have Let's Go Eevee, your starter will be an Eevee. And if you're Pikachu, you have a, you're going to be having Pikachu. Wow, what a concept. Turns out, in Eevee, you get a free Eevee. And in Pikachu, you get a free Pikachu. What a concept. For our Eevee runners, they're just going to check, you're just going to throw the balls as quickly as possible. But for Pikachu, an important factor is actually checking what CP it has. Uh, we'll go over what the CP is, but I'm trying to pay attention. It is 26. So CP is a number that you don't necessarily have to care about for the most part because it's just an arbitrary number that is supposed to like combine all the Pokemon stats together. Uh, something I'm going to actually mention to all our runners and everyone who is here, this Pokemon is guaranteed catch no matter what. So you just have to chuck the ball at it and it will just stay in. So don't worry if it's a great or perfect for this Pokemon because it literally does not matter. So the only reason why this matters for Pikachu is because the CP can kind of give you an indication of what your Pikachu stats are. If it's 26, we do know that it is plus nature in something and minus nature in something else. Whereas if it's 27, it is it is a neutral nature out of all of the Excuse me, out of all of the... out of It's just a neutral nature. For Eevee, you don't really get to know because of how numbers work. 
So it'll be interesting to see if any of our runners is going to either pivot to a backup or not pivot to a backup. Uh, as because this is a race setting, we do allow all of our speedrunners to go into a backup Eevee or backup Pikachu should they wish to once they receive their Pokemon. So it'll be it. So by, it does lose about a minute, but having a bad Eevee or a bad Pikachu can be worse than, you know, than having that. So for JLF, we do have a thing that is gentle nature. In fact, I am going to write down the nature so that someone can pin it. So it's JLF is a gentle nature, which I believe is... I'm just going to type this down right now as our people, as our runners are going for, you know, just doing some top, some text cutscenes. And... As I quickly go get myself what the hell the gentle nature is. Gentle is... Where is it? Minus defense plus special defense. Thank thank you so much. So all of our runners are now going to go route one. We want to avoid all the encounters for right now. Well, we do have to... We, there is a number with, next to all of our runners that, they're gonna, that we're going to have to go for. But right now, we don't have to worry about that number as of right yet. We're going to get our parcel from the Mart so that we can deliver it to Professor Oak. And then we're going to get into our first fight, our first fight. So it's minus defense plus special defense. Yeah, so... Did I just say our first fight with our first fight? I am really... I am, I am saying words today. So our first fight with our rival. For EP, it's simple spam tackle. And for Pikachu, it will be uh, spam Thundershock. It's essentially just spam off spam moves. Eevee typically has an advantage here as Eevee can, in some circumstances, go for a, get the three, get a three turn, whereas Pikachu is typically a four turn. But there can be situations for Pikachu to get a three turn, and there can be situations for Eevee where they get like a five, six, seven turn or something along those lines. So hopefully, all of, for all of our runners' sake, they get like a nice fight with with uh, rival one. The one down. Ooh, that's a pretty good attack for Mo for Mocha jo for Mocha Jones. Ah, uh, sadly, he does get the growl, but if that seems like a pretty good peak Eevee for Mocha, at the very least. Oh, but Burno gets the paralysis and the gets a paralysis on the Eevee. That's not great. But aside from that. All of our runners have seemed to at least... Oh, wait. M Burn is still kind of stuck. Uh... Oh, no! Oh, Burner, please, get out the fight. Thank you. Right, so that's not a great fight for Burner. But for everyone else, it was an okay fight. So... So that's going to be, so that's obviously the first rival fight we're going to see. We're going to go through Route 1 and go through the next trainer. Normally, if you're in Pikachu version, this trainer is where you can figure out what your stats are. For Eevee, because Pikachu yields you one less experience, you do not get the level up on this fight. Meaning, the most optimal time for Eevee to get to know what their level is. Eevee is going to, Eevee has to wait till the fight afterwards, sadly. So, for Mocha and Burner, we don't exactly know what their stats are yet. We will be figuring that out uh, very sh very soon. In fact, you guys are going to have to help me a little bit as... I'm not too familiar with the EV stats, but I do. I am familiar with the EV strats. So, we'll see what all of our runners go for as... This fight, again, very simple fight. You tackle or you Thundershock twice. The Rattata, or the Rattata gets knocked out. Easy fight. There's also a concept that I'm going to explain here as well, known as AV. So as you see on the Pikachu, it gained a plus one into speed. So these are AVs or Awakening values. Every level that you get, you get a plus one in a 
random stat, but for every 10 levels, you will always get that stat increase. So for JLF, every 10 levels at level 6, 16, and 26, he's going to get himself a plus speed EV. So we're heading into Viridian Forest. This is actually going to be an indicator of what our stats are going to be for Mocha Jones. And uh, I should probably have the EV notes up, but I do not. So I'm going to wait until Mocha Jones gets to level 10 to figure out what, their stat what his stats are. So all of our runners are heading into Viridian Forest. This is going to be our first area where we're going to be catching a lot of Pokemon. So, one, so every gym has a requirement that they're going to have to go through. Uh, gym 1 is going to be... Gym 1's requirement is we do need to catch a grass type, but the most important requirement that we have to go through is we need to have 50 Pokemon registered in our Pokedex for us to actually complete the game. So we're going to be... Sorry, we're going to be catching a lot of Pokemon throughout the speedrun, ideally Pokemon that can evolve. There are going to be some cases where we're not going to be getting Pokemon that evolve, but we are going to be getting some Pokemon that... We are going to be getting some Pokemon that will uh, not evolve, but I ideally we want to get Pokemon that do uh, evolve with multiple times. So we don't Caterpie are a perfect example, but we're not catching anything yet because we want to wait. We want to... Uh... Ugh, I cannot talk today. Uh... So we want, we want to wait until we get a law because we actually want to spawn everything at the highest level plus one. And the reason why we want to do this is because the higher the level, not only the more experience will we gain from the Pokemon, but also the more uh, the more experience we want to get, the more experience we gain, but also the less levels that the Pokemon has to level up so that they can evolve. So that's why we are waiting until the law. Sometimes we will wait for uh, specific Pokemon. Sometimes we will wait for uh, specific po Sometimes we will... Ugh, I cannot speak today. I'm actually losing my mind. But anyway, Mocha has one of the first bonuses in the entire run, which is a Pikachu. So in Eevee version, you can catch Pikachu. Obviously, you won't catch Pikachu in Pikachu version, but because that's kind of silly. But in Eevee, you can catch yourself a Pikachu, and that is going to be a bonus spawn. Both games have interesting requirements of when they want to get out of the forest. And one of the requirements for Pikachu is just simply, I want an Oddish. But for Eevee, you want a Weeping Bell. No, sorry, Bell Sprout, as well as being at least level 10 so that you learn Double Kick. So all the runners are catching their Pokemon and they're also getting uh, to their lore. Uh, Mocha is removing their Pikachu because you don't need it anymore. And you also don't want Pokemon to gain experience when they don't need to. So you remove the Pikachu because you don't want to see the, the Pika. And we do see our first Frick of the run, ladies and gentlemen. This is a Lord Frick. It is pretty bad to catch, and especially at 1P. So let's hope that Mocha can actually get it. This is technically another Pokemon that can fulfill the grass type requirement for Pikachu. And as we can see, uh, the Frick is trolling Mocha pretty hard. Uh, Mocha, wait till it attacks first and then throw. There we go. Let's see if it stays in. No! Oh, this is this is uh, unfortunate for Mocha Jones. He's wasting a lot of time on this starter because starter attack cycles are annoying. They can they can just get in the way and. Hopefully this is going to stay in. Bulbasaur is what we'd like to consider a special spawn. I believe they are a 1% chance to spawn special spawns. I might be wrong about that. But you, this is pretty good for in the early game as it is two catch, two, effectively two catches in one Pokemon. And also fulfills your grass type requirements. So you don't act... So Mocha Jones doesn't actually need a Weeping Bell, but it wouldn't surprise me if he still goes for one, as it is just an extra Pokemon that he can keep. Which is really nice. So as we can see with JLF, he has caught his Bugs, but he has not caught his Oddish, so he's going to be doing something what we like to call Route 2 Roulette, which is, simply put, uh, he's going to refresh Route 2 
or just find an Oddish beforehand. That's a, that's fine too. So he can go for this, and he chooses not to go for this. So that is a bit of a risk that he is going to take with not picking up the Oddish that's there. It, the advantage being that the Oddish outside is level 9, so it is two levels higher. But the downside being that if you don't find an Oddish like he does now, he has to go back out and go back in and reset until he finds the Oddish. And you want to make sure you find the Oddish before the lore runs out. So, gets punished again. So, we are seeing here that he's just get DLF is getting punished again and again for not picking up that Oddish, but in the forest when he encountered it earlier. That's three resets now. For JLF, so it's not looking good for him. As for our other runners, they do seem to have caught everything that they need to have caught. Now JLF finally gets his Oddish, which is really nice for him. Oddish is incredibly important for the next gym fight, as not only is it your grass type requirement, but it is also your. It's also just the best way to deal with uh, on, with the rock gym, which is also a ground gym because all the rock Pokemon are ground type. In the next in the next gym so jlf leaving with what is essentially going to be uh six catches uh with both the evolutions of the bug middle evolutions of the bugs as well as the oddish uh burner i believe also about to leave the forest as well oh. seems to be do seems to be uh boxing something Oh, he's doing an interest interesting. So he's actually contemplating catching depositing uh a weedle and catching a kakuna. I guess oh because of his experience, he doesn't have enough experience to uh be level 10 yet. So I guess that's the reason why he's doing it. So that's definitely a play that he, that he, that you can do. Uh respectable play. Uh, you could also catch yourself either a rat or a Pidgey in the outside if you want extra experience, but yeah, all he now needs to do is to catch, yeah, now he just needs to catch a rat or a bird outside, and he will have enough experience to, uh, well, get, meet the level requirement for learning Double Kick. Mocha also leaving as well, does have his grass type Pokemon, so he doesn't actually need to get Weeping Belt. You can still consider, actually, no, sorry, he does have Weeping Belt, I'm... I am mistaken. He has six Pokemon. I believe none of the bugs have evolved yet, which is interesting. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. So Mocha now heading into Box Gym. Uh, the strats between Eevee and Pikachu are a bit different. For Eevee, because Weeping Bell isn't that great at dealing with uh, the Pokemon, you just solo Eevee in the entirety. You double kick the Geodude, and then you use Tail Whip on the Onyx and then double kick it again. As for JLF, because you have access to... Because with JLF, because you have access to Oddish, who has a special type grass type move and absorb you can actually just use absorb twice if and hopefully with the onyx you hit the range at level nine level 10 is guaranteed but level nine has a chance of getting a one hit ko of course if you want to play it safe uh you can just use growth and you can guarantee the range over there the main annoying thing is that onyx can outspeed the oddish and can go for headbutt which can flinch So JLF does have a way faster fight than Eevee does, than Mocha Jones does. So we can see Mo uh, JLF just catch up in that regard. That's the fight for that's the fight for JLF and fight for Mocha and Burner is soon going to be doing the same fight that all of our runners have done. As we head into Brock, while JLF and Mocha are very close behind, very close ahead in the pack, thanks to them finally beating Brock. Do note that 
the catch count does kind of determine, does kind of differ between our runners in terms of their pacing as as the copy pasta might want to disagree with me, one catch is roughly equivalent to 30 seconds. I know some cat some people will say, actually it's not 30 seconds because if you go have to chase down a Growlithe, but it's like more like 40 seconds, but you know what? As a simple baseline, it is th it is roughly 30 seconds. As we can as we and so while JLF may have the story lead, uh Mocha Jones might be is not rough, not really too much far behind as he does have a uh, seven count count. Bernard does have a seven count count, but he is behind Mocha as he still has to do the Brock fight, whereas Mocha has already done the Brock fight. Going into our first shopping of the run, our runners are going to be buying a differing amount of items, but typically it's going to be great balls, one X special, one X attack. If you're Pika, you also might want to you also buy an X defend. Or I guess here, I guess JLF is buying a burn heal instead. Yes, he is. Okay, so he's doing a different strat where you don't buy the X defend, but you said you buy the burn heal. Uh, ice heals. Oh no. Uh, uh, that might that might be a uh, problematic later, if especially if he gets put to sleep. But you know what? We'll uh, deal with that problem when we get there. So, I did manage to catch that, so hopefully JLF does not get punished by putting it to sleep! Yeah, he bought Ice Heals over Awakenings by accident. And also hit a trainer, so that's uh, the first optional for this uh, race tournament that we are going to have today. Thankfully, it is just a Spearow, so you just, like, headbutt it. Oh, wait, uh, summon, uh, you might want to summon the second controller. Because, or just like bring Pikachu in and just use the Thunder Shock. That's also fine too. So yeah, it's not the greatest uh, trainer to hit, but you know what? It's fine. As Mocha Jones just barely ma manages to dodge that same trainer. And in this route, we have something called uh, optionals. We already talked about, well, bonuses, bonus catches. We already talked about this beforehand, but one of the bonuses for Eevee is going to be Schneck. And the bonuses for Pika, uh, actually Pika has two bonuses. Uh, the bonuses for Pika is Monkey and Shrew. So that's going to be interesting to see if, e if any of our runners see uh, any bonuses. Mocha Jones does get one of the bonuses. And I think we had a little bit of a problem with the feed, but that's okay. Seems to have a little bit of a problem with the Mocha Jones feed a little bit, but that is... Ao, okay, it's a bit behind, but that's fine. Not sure if a great ball is supposed to take that long, but that is a okay. And as JLF is going to get one of the freest catches in the entire game, which is of course the Magic Cup. It is well, it's free in a sense that you have to pay five hundred dollars, well five hundred poker dollars, but at the very least, it's it's a uh, five hundred, yeah. You don't have to pay for 500 poker dollars. It's just the easiest catch in the game. Just go pick it up. It is actually faster than Lapras, than Lapras and Porygon, from what I've heard. Now we head into where most runs come to die, aside from starter resets, which is, of course, Mount Moon. So Pikachu and Eevee have slightly different strats when it comes to Mount Moon. Typically, Eevee wants to do the menu of, you know, teaching Headbutt and using the lore before the first trainer so that it can learn headbutt whereas whereas pikachu wants to do it later as it wants to actually use oddish for a few extra fights before going down into the main place with the main area of we're going to be catching a lot of pokemon there are three things that we want to catch in here while we are here uh the first thing that we want to catch is a angry rock. I don't think JLF is going to catch this one as it is an unlord rock, so we want to get as much experience as we can. So we want to catch an angry rock called Geodude, a pink blob called Clefairy, and a mushroom called Paris. Those are the three things that we want to catch. 
and they are the things that gives us not only the experience, especially Clefairy, it gives us a lot of experience, but also these are just the three catches that we want here. Everything else that can spawn here, with the exception of Onyx, we kind of want later. We don't really want to catch Zubat here. Onyx is a choice to catch. But the other two things that can spawn here, which will be very interesting to see if our runners choose to go for, is the Fable and uh, Chansey. Those are two very big pink things that give a lot of experience. But at the same time, they are pretty difficult to catch, especially that these are our newer runners. They are not exactly confident. I won't. They are. They won't. I wouldn't say that they are the most confident when it comes to catching stuff. Yet, I. They're not at the highest degree compared to our other runners. But it'll be interesting to see what they choose. What they choose. How they tackle those situations. As we can see, all of our runners. It's the Pikachu runners now. JLF is now doing the menu now, just before entering the room where we're going to get ourselves not only the Moonstone, but also a Nugget. Nugget's going to be good good for later when they use, uh, when they're going to sell stuff. But also, but the Moonstone is going to be important, not only for it being a potential evolution, but if they all set, if all of our runners set up the timers in the way that they did, uh, they will be able to get something called a double Moonstone. So if the date rolls over while in this room, they can get themselves a. They can get themselves a, a 50% chance for a second Moonstone, which will be interesting to see. Uh, Mocha, both Mocha and Jalen have reached that room and have gotten their first Moonstone, so I will be trying to pay attention as much as I can to see whether or not they have a. Whether or not they get the second Moonstone. So I believe both Mocha, Mocha got himself a Geo, a glowing Geo dude, whereas I believe JLF has caught himself a Paris, if I am not mistaken. Let me just check their trackers real quick. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, I guess some of them haven't updated their trackers quite yet, but we'll see what they get. Mocha Jones is going for the Paris, so I'm guessing that the first Pokemon was a Geo dude. Bona is also going for the Paris and misses the. Excellent throw own. That's gonna suck for experiences. For those who do not know, uh, the next requirement that we now have to hit is level 15. Uh, the reason why level 15 is the most important requirement for our runners coming forward is because Misty does not allow you to enter her gym unless you are level 15. That is just a strict requirement. So if you're not level 15 yet, you have to kind of do the slow way round, which is completely fine then. I find it really funny that our feeds of Mocha and JLF are evolving Kakuna at the exact same time. I think that's kind of funny. We will be seeing a lot of our runners go in, so Burner also picking up his Moonstone. And we'll see what spawns yet. By the way, no pink things yet for any of our runners yet. So we have no no pink thing. So no Clefairy for any of our runners. That's uh, a bit unfortunate for all of our runners. But you know what? It's a thing. So. Yeah, so. Day left going here, his you dude. So Mocha, I believe Mocha and Bernard both have their rocks and their mushrooms, but not a single pink thing to spawn right now. It's kind of unfortunate for all of our runners. We hope to see it spawn at some point. Hopefully. So Bernard, oh my god, Bernard surrounded by Zubats. Oh no. But man, yeah, Clefairy just not spawning for Bernard. I guess he's doing a room reset. Yeah, he's going to be doing a room reset. That makes sense. So hopefully we get to see Clefairy spawn at some point. The Lord does wear off, so the Clefairy will... Not only does the Pokemon have less chance of spawning, but there's less Pokemon. So yeah, no Clefairy yet for any of our runners. I believe JLF is also doing a room reset. Yep. Yep, just not a single one. For any one of our runners. This is... I mean, I know Clefairy is like not a common spawn at all, but 
this is ridiculous. This is actually like one of the most ridiculous things I've seen. Three runners on the exact same screen. No Clefairy. No, no Clefairy. No Clefable. No. Ch ah, never mind. There's a Chansey for Mocha. Bonjour, Chansey. And I do believe this is still a Lord Chansey. And let me just check, double check the level. It is level 11. I think that might be Unlord. But yes, that is a Chansey. Hopefully that Mocha gets it in. Ooh, just misses. And speaking of pink thing, there's a Clefable on JLF screen. So two of our runners getting not not the pink thing entirely. Are you going to say no? Okay, just the menu mishap. It's fine. So Chansey is going to give, you know, a good amount of experience. Not as much as Mocha would probably have hoped as... Um, he did miss the excellent, whereas JLF just got is about to get the excellent. But a catch is still a catch, and finally, for one of our runners, we have a Clefairy, which is great. And oh no, the oh he went for Great Ball. Ooh, he went for Great Ball Pokeballs. That's why he's not. That's why the Clefable didn't get in because it's actually not as likely as you would want for the Clefairy. And yeah, so this is like a one interesting run where Clefairy just decided not to spawn and then just for Mocha Jones' screen just decided just to not show up and uh Yeah, you do want uh Bunny, you do want to be great balls. Just by the way, makes catching things easier. So that is uh, you know, a lot of interesting things that have been happening for all of our runners. A lot of interest a lot of interesting um Things to happen for, you know, all runners, just like very quickly. So, yeah, so Mocha Jones getting himself a Chansey, but missing a Clefairy, which is always unfortunate. Uh, JLF getting a Clefable instead of a Clefairy. And Burn, I believe the only one who actually has currently a Clefairy caught in their party. A second club. I mean, you are on a catch chain, so it's not like unlikely, but lol. <laughs> just having a Clefable just spawn in front of you. And <laughs> wow, okay, I guess we're just gonna have the Clefable party because now we're just having a third Clefable, this time for Burner sh Shop. So, Clefable, very grateful experience, but it is a thing. And as we can see for JLF screen, this is what happens if you accidentally buy the wrong healing item and get Hypnosis put to sleep. Now he's just stuck here and hoping to wake up. Thankfully, it didn't take too long to wake up, but it is annoying for when that does happen. Man, this is like a very interesting rock tunnel so far for all of our runners. Like, I still think that only one person here has a Clefairy, which is, if I'm not mistaken, it is... Uh, wait, no, so no one's marked Clefairy in their tracker. I'll double check that, but I believe Burn is the only one that has a Clefairy. Mocha did see a Clefairy, but did unfortunately unspawn, and oh my god, there's a second Chansey for Mocha, and a third Clefable for JLF. This, this is a... This is a Mount Moon. This is a Mount Moon if I've seen one. Oh, the Clefairy ran. That makes more. That makes more sense. So now we head into uh, the nerd fight and also the rocket fights. It's pretty much very sim Very simple. The nerd fight for Eevee is just you headbutt and then you double kick. And you ideally want to be at the very least level 15 for these fights. 14 is fine, but you want to be 15 as these do. As 15 does help making these fights a lot better but this is this this moon is uh this moon is something like i've just like this is like a moon montage of all time i think i i'm not sure what kind of other moons we've had that's just been like this ridiculous and you know there's just an onyx for good measure as well on mocha jones screen just just for good measure So yeah, Mocha Jones now heading into the first Jesse and James fight. By far the second easiest Jesse and James fight in the entire thing. Burner, actually I just realized Burner catching his Clefable, which is nice to see. 
it's going to be a nice good chunk of experience for all of our runners. And this fight for Eevee, pretty simple. You X attack, you headbutt. Final little thing about this fight is it's actually the opposite in Pikachu, where you actually use an X special if you're Pikachu so that your Thunder Shocks do more damage. Instead of uh, using. What is it? Instead of uh, using instead of, instead of using headbutt, there is a strat if you have plus attack or minus special to use headbutt for Pikachu. But typically the strat is you use X special for Pikachu and X attack for Eevee. Mocha Jones doing that fight pretty well. Nothing to complain about here. And of course, and of course, you know. Everyone else and Poco running into a third Chansey. <laughs> what is that? Three Chanseys for Mocha? That is actually absurd. <laughs> apparently, when people are being like, let's have all the Chanseys summoned, apparently it's all in one race. This is like the tournament of Chanseys. <laughs> like, where are they when you actually need them in other in other runs? <laughs> That's like absolutely absurd jlf doing his um fight for the uh blah, 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 blah. doing his jesse and james fight which is also pretty simple of a fight it's not the most crazy fight but it is a pretty uh simple simple fight and yeah so now we finally arrive in cerulean city the home of Misty's gym, but also the home of this imp is this move tutor. For Eevee, you're going to learn three moves. Uh, Buzzy Buzz, Bouncy Bubble, and Slizzly Slide. All three of those moves are incredibly busted in different in different ways. They are all 90 base power moves. Uh, Bouncy Bubble and Buzzy Buzz are special moves, whereas Slizzly Slide is a physical move. Uh, and they all have a secondary effect associated with them. Bouncy Buzz auto paralyzes, but uh, Sizzly Slide auto burns, and Bouncy Bubble heals 50% of the damage that you have dealt with. It is also very interesting to see that JLF does pick up the PP up and does find a Sand Shrew outside, so that is a nice bonus for him to get before doing Misty's Gym. Pikachu, when JLF finally gets there, waiting for the Sand Shrew to attack, It always happens. It's like you wait for the Sandshrew to attack, and then you decide to wait, and then it just doesn't attack, and then you throw it, it, it attack. It, that's always the fun experience of that skill. But when Pikachu does, when JLF does get to the Pokemon Center in Cerulean City, uh, Pikachu will learn Zippy Zap, which is a 50 base power electric type move that has plus two in terms of priority, as well as having the ability to always crit, which is, you know, very nice to see. You know, very nice very nice secondary effect for Pikachu, and it's going to be Pikachu's main move throughout the entirety of the rest of a speed run. It doesn't learn any other moves, I always say, because it doesn't need to, but it will be relying on the power of friendship throughout the rest of a speed run to deal with its uh, severe lack of coverage, because Pikachu has, what, a lightning move? Sorry, electric move? I'm playing too much of a TCG recently. It also has a fighting move and a normal move, so that is uh, not great coverage, especially if you are against ground types, which there is a fair few amount of ground types that we're going to have to deal with throughout this entire speedrun, and we're going to have different Pokemon to deal with it in different ways. As we head on to Mocha, Mocha reaching Misty, uh, this fight is actually pretty interesting. You go ahead and use an expert. Oh, you're confused! Oh, no! That's, uh, oh, I do not like that health. Getting confusion into confused up, uh, please. Okay, so. That is, uh, a horrible fight for, for Mocha. Oh my goodness. That is actually terrible. That is actually just so unlucky. My, my, my goodness. I think you definitely absolutely have to heal this because otherwise, uh, that Eevee is gonna die for to a skull to a skull. So, man, Mocha getting not that great luck when it comes to uh, the Misty fight. She's just, I mean, getting all those chances. Uh, you're gonna have to get some unlucky somewhere, and I guess the place that you're gonna get unlucky is the fight in of itself. 
But yes, as Mocha did show, if you are ever struggling with any of the fights and something just goes wrong, just remember, you do have the second controller, and while it is slower, you can just uh, bail yourself out in bad situations, and that is it, and that is going to be completely fine for Mocha, as I do. JLF is going to have a much simpler fight. I do believe JLF is not a range for the Pikachu. Uh, for, sorry, for the Starmie, hope, hopefully, because this is a pretty low special defense for, well, pretty low HP for the Pikachu, so we're pr we're hoping that it is guaranteed. I'm pretty sure that level 16 means that unless you have, like, really bad attack, it's not guaranteed, but we do know that JLF is not minus attack, so I'm pretty certain that this is completely fine. If not, it's probably just a range that you hit anyway. Yeah, level 16, even with a neutral attack, Pikachu is 15-16. Uh, it's guaranteed at either 1 or 2 AV above neutral. Also, hi, I'm here now. Yes, we have random, well, not random, just extra, not only our tech person for today, but also our extra commentator because no one else could do it. I mean, I play enough randomizers, I could be random. Yes, so, you know, I finally have someone that I can actually bounce off to before, so <laughs> I'm not, like, struggling for the next hour. Yeah. So it looks like our runners are doing uh, well. I was watching earlier and I saw those moons. Holy heck. Yeah, those are some moons of all time, I would sh I should say. Like, right? I think Mocha had three chances in moon spawn. I don't know what the odds of that, but I'm pretty sure it's low. I don't know enough French to make, like, a funny pun on triple bonjour, but... It just assume I made it, and it was hilarious. Like, y'all got me, right? Yeah, 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 we definitely have, like, it's, <laughs> it's a French invasion, that's that's what that moon is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, anyway, it looks like uh, Mocha and JLF are on the bridge rival fight, while Burner is starting his Misty fight. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't go as bad as a Mocha Jones Misty fight, because that was a Misty fight of all time. If I've ever seen one, which is confusion, confusion into confu being confused and then hitting yourself twice in confusion. In a row. I mean... I get that. I've been there. I've had those days. That is, you know, one hell of a fight that you don't want to see. And oh, we even died! Oh no. I. Is that Skull? Unfortunately. You don't have revives at this point. You just didn't have to. Yeah. You just didn't have to unfortunately just take the L here, I think. And yeah, just try luckily, again. if you do wipe because you hop into the Cerulean Center, uh, you will respawn in Cerulean. But I yeah, don't know uh... enough about the Eevee fight to know whether or not that was. Oh, wait. Wait, I just realized, uh, Burner's Eevee is Locke's nature, so that is a minus special defense Eevee. Ah. So, there is a good chance that you can accidentally, well, get knocked out as we've seen here. <laughs> the only problem is you don't have the X special. Yeah, so, and also you lose half the money that you've banked up at this point, so... Like, do you want to go out of your way to hit the Mart and go down a little bit lower? Uh, uh, this is this I is a tricky think, one for Burner. I don't think Burner has ever been in this situation, so he's definitely going to buy the X Special at the very least. Yeah. But I guess you could try, like, 2C Buzzy Buzz plus Vine Whip. That could also be, be an option, but yeah, it is mm -hmm. really unfortunate for Burner to to have that moment as yeah minor i don't i believe like minor special defense like gold just has a more likelihood chance of knocking you out yeah and like let, let's be honest this is not a situation that most runners practice this is you know in any reasonable pb attempt that would just be a reset yeah and yeah pb attempts you just be like uh what's the combination home x and y no <laughs> home x a that's the correct combination if you want to yeah. reset the run, you, you yeah, for Pikachu, but for, for just Let's Go in general, the other games you want to be home Y and A, which is, allows you just to go through the profile much faster, but yeah, 
That is the famous Switch combination, which is the PC equivalent of Alt F4. <laughs> God. In the meantime, our other two runners making quick work of Nugget Bridge. Yeah, Nugget Bridge is typically the section that we like to call, like, just boring because, well, it is. So I yeah. actually had a little bit of a fun segment that we can do, which is the fact that I've actually pulled up all of our runners' speedrun.com pages. Ooh, that's always fun. So we get to peek a little bit more of our runners and their, you know, speedrun history and what they've done. So obviously all of our runners have done Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee and do have a board, do have a time on the leaderboards. All right, all right. Yeah, for Mocha, we all, he's also, Mocha is more well known for, of course, his Scar and Violet stuff, as he has represented the game, path, the Path of Legends speedrun specifically in many shows, including, uh, in, you know, I believe Hop, Hopix and other marathons. He has 8th place on the leaderboard with a time of 52 minutes and 43. But what you might not know is that he's also done speedruns of Octopath Traveler as well as Metroid Dread. Ooh, what Octopath categories? Uh, from what I can tell, he's done one single story, and I have no idea how to pronounce this. This is Anit, I believe. Honey. Is it one? Okay. Right? Yeah. Huh. I've also done a little bit of Octopath in my day. As well as having uh, two runs done for Metroid Dread, one being all bosses, glitchless, and, uh, and the other one being any percent, no major glitches. As for Burner, he's actually done more Pokemon speedruns that you might that you might think. He's done an X and Y speedrun of any percent. He also has a time on a, the most important Sword and Shield category, uh, Flex on Flex on Flex on Mom. <laughs> And he also has some hot gold soul silver times as well, being a time in any percent glitchless, manipulous glitchless, and also the other most important category of hot gold soul silver, the bug catching contest. Let's go! As we do see Mocha, as we get a little bit distracted, we do see Mocha do, does getting his bonus spawn here of Meowth, which is really nice. Thanks. And uh, like burners out of Misty and about to start going up. Uh, SRC Bridge as well. Yes. And as for JLF, he actually has a lot of... Definitely a lot more, Poke more Pokemon speedruns. Not uh, expertise. And pretty much has a speedrun of... Done a speedrun of every single game. And it makes sense because he does have the world record for the main series glitchless Octafector. Which is every Pokemon game for base generation back to back to back in one sitting. Ah. Uh Wow. Wanting to know, it took him one day, five hours, eight minutes, and 34 seconds. That's not counting breaks, right? Uh, I believe that is counting breaks. Ooh. If I'm okay. not mistaken. Let me just double check real quick. Yeah, because yeah, I hope yeah. they let you sleep during that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no break. That is no breaks. That is does include breaks. Wait, no break. Wait. So it doesn't include the break times. Wait, um, you know what? We'll get to that. But also he has some of, he does uh, some other speed and some other things. He's also done Super Mario Odyssey All Moons, which is the collect every moon in Mario Odyssey. And it took him 12 hours and 46 minutes to do so. But he also has another world record in Bob mm. the Builder. Hell yes! Yes, we can! But as to confirm with the Octafector, he did not sleep. He played them all back to back. So, JLF, wins bad in Kytos. So, that is a little bit of a speedrun roundup for all of our runners and, you know. Their other accomplishments in all of the other Pokemon, in all the other speedrun games, as, of course, Many people don't just be run one game. They mm -hmm. be run other games too. And it's always just interesting to see what other games they choose to do uh, when it comes to what comes to what games they like to play and what games when it comes to uh, the speed run. Because you always find people do interesting games and interesting speed runs when you decide to, for fun, look at their speedrun.com profile. 
Yeah, there's some wild stuff in there. And yeah, and yeah, so, I mean, well, we haven't even come... I wish there was just, like more to say, but it was like, we haven't got to the point where Nugget Bridge is over, because Nugget Bridge is just such a long section, because, you know, it's Nugget Bridge. It's the section. It's everyone's favorite section. So, you know, while we're just letting runners clean up and steadily approaching the Route 6 catching section, I guess my question is, what about you? What's your weird speedrun? Oh, you want to know uh, my speedrun profile? My speedrun profile. So, I haven't done that. I'm not relatively new. Like, if you mm -hmm. have a look at my speedrun profile page, you you can see like I have way too many Scarlet and Violet speedruns on my on my profile page. Some world records, some were world records. Mm -hmm. uh, the only Sword and Shield category I've done so far and submitted is Galarian Star Tournament because that's the best category. Nice. And I do have two world records in two other non-Pokemon games, both of which I got first try. Those games being? Those games being Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Winter Games for the Nintendo DS. Let's go. As well as, more recently, Kid Icarus Uprising. Ooh. As I'm surprised as that one yet... wasn't more popular. Sorry? I'm surprised Kid Icarus Uprising isn't more optimized. Well, there's a reason for that, and it's called RNG, and it's also called It Takes Four Hours to Do. Oh, jeez. Okay, never mind. I do understand why that's not more optimized. <laughs> it's also a 3DS game, so... <laughs> yeah. And when I mean it's just under four hours, I mean I got the sub first sub four hour sub four first four hours in that category. But that's not mm -hmm. enough about me. Route six. Yep. Uh, JLF is going to be our first runner there. On the Pika side, this is a much more important route than it is for Eevee. Uh, because yes. we need a buddy. We Yes. Ideally and that buddy we is find not the called fancy, but we need a buddy. Yeah, ideally we're looking for a Growlithe, but if we can't find a Growlithe, uh, we can use an Abra, and if we can't find an Abra and evolve it into Kadabra, things get a little spicy, but we can still make do. Okay, uh, there's all... I have figured out strats that you can do if that mm -hmm. does happen. It's not the end of the world. Bernie, you're going the wrong way. Thank you. <laughs> you do not want to go into that high, Katrina. Thank you very much. So yeah, JLF is going to get that rare candy. Technically, the least optimal rare candy. However, we are waiting for things to spawn. Uh, do be careful that every time you step, you are running out your lore counter. You can just stand in a corner and wait for things to spawn. And we're just seeing ducks. Quack. 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 This is not the time for ducks, my friend. We want to see a papa, and we are not seeing that. There is a thing that you can do, which is uh, something called a room reset, which is you go back to where you need to go go back to where you were and then reset mm -hmm. the encounters but it is uh that's not great and also for mocha not getting the um not immediately throwing on the jigglypuff to punish but does actually miss the jigglypuff which is unfortunate it is a good chunk of experience for eevee because from what I've learned from TPAT the other day, experience yield is actually based on a Pokemon's HP. That's why Chansey gives you so much. But yeah, I, be I believe that was a thing that was established all the way back in like Generation 1, if I remember my lore. Uh, uh, I'm going to have to take your word for it. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's not like... the end of the world, uh, not getting the uh, Growlithe. Oh, for goodness sake. The law spawn. The law. If you didn't catch it, the law unlord and then the Growlithe spawned because, of course, it did. Of course, it did. But there is a strat that you can do. Uh, you're just gonna have to double X attack on the Pika instead of using one. But that's completely fine. Yeah. I do believe one of our runners picked up the PP up, and that was JLF actually. So he does. Mm -hmm. Oh, he chose to sell both of those items. Oh, so he has a lot more he money. Is. He's rich. Flushing cash. Oh, Dang. Well, actually... Okay, so this is actually clever. By buying both of those items, you can buy more Great Balls. Mm -hmm. 
And more supers. I think this might be a new strat that we've seen, but I'm not, no, not sure where. You're also buying the Awakenings. Yep, you need to buy, you need to buy that. Yeah, I, I don't hate it if you're feeling like you need the extra resources for getting through this stage of the game. Um, and given the fact that he's down to buying the same number of items that you usually buy here, it seems like he's taken the time to really sit down and route out. And there's 2,000 left over. Yeah. I don't think the 2,000 left over really matters too much. Normally, you don't want, you spend all your money here in on Pikachu version, but yep. it does make sense if you want to buy, you know, have more Great Balls so you're not screwed over. Yeah. For that extra money, I probably would have bought one more X attack because you are using two here when you normally use one. I actually have counted the number of X attacks that you buy. Normally, you buy 14 here, but actually, mm -hmm. something that I've been experimenting a little bit is you can actually get away with 13. Okay. Comfortably. Yeah. And so, I've been doing a strat where I've been buying one less X attack and buying like twenty one great balls because mm -hmm. it's actually easier to menu for both of those things. Yeah. Wow. I might have to try that myself. Uh I think it's like it's thirteen because I've always realized every time I had fourteen, I just have like one or two extra and that's mm -hmm. even after using an x attack with dodrio so i guess yep. like the only downside is if you need to use an extra x attack in a specific fight you probably won't have x attack for dodrio but for the most part you don't really use an x attack for dodrio anyway because uh that's a situational strat anyway yeah once you get to rock tunnel you're, you're you know really relying on the thunderbolt outside of the you know hard required x attacks in like rocket hideout yeah so, at least to me, 13 is something that I'm able to just get away with and not be completely punished. Because I think it's like, what, one here normally, unless you're JLF, in which case you're probably using two anyway. It's like, yeah, it's, I think it, you buy 13, unless you know you have to use two here, in which case you buy 14. <laughs> well, as Burner is heading down, picking up After the extra repel. repel. I, I, learned that, I learned something new today. Honestly, I might start picking that up if I'm feeling behind on my catch counts coming out of Vermilion. Because, like, you're walking by it anyway. If you feel like you you need to play it safe on, like, Route 10 and reset, to, to having that extra reset could be useful. Yeah, I've had a situation where I think having that repel would actually be pretty useful. Because, uh, well, we'll get to Route 10 in a second, but I've had a case with Pikachu <laughs> where you needed a Nido. I went to Route 10, four things spawned, none of them were Nido, repelled, repelled, four spawns again, no Nido, did the fight, came back, four spawns, still no Nido. Oh yeah, no, I think every single Pikachu runner has had that issue. And I basically went into the question of, is there a strat that we can just skip Nido? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know that if you miss Vermilion skip, you get 400 extra bucks, which is enough for a single repel. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Oh, oh, oh! Let's go! You got the Abra! The Abra that spawned for him earlier is, no, is now now here. Let's go. Alright. Oh, and we've, it's, we've got some the nabs, Abra. but deciding, deciding to go for the Raz instead. Hi, I mean... The, the higher catch chance rather than keeping it still. It's a choice. Yeah. But, you know, he gets the great, so, you know, let's go. Yeah, like... He, S second try, but still hits it really nice. I you mean struggle great. with the moving Pokemon. Uh, okay, this is not the time to pet your Eevee, by the way. I know you just want a very <laughs> difficult fight, but not yet. Yeah. Look, so... petting is for after the, the final champion fight. Yeah. Although, there is something I would recommend JLF if he is listening. Uh, don't watch the... Well, one, don't watch the cutscene. Uh, but mm -hmm. two, after the convers after you get the, this little cutscene, I would actually choose to make use a lore as Growlithe is important enough that mm -hmm. actually menuing to use a lore here to see if Growlithe can spawn is because having Growlithe for the it's like having Growlithe not having Growlithe for rival three, 
that's fine. Well, here it works too as well, but I'm just like paranoid that he is too close. But mm -hmm. not having Growlithe for the Picnicker or the fight afterward for the two Picnickers, kind of bad. As we can see here, we does he does find the Growlithe. He has to be a bit careful. That Growlithe is uh, living its life dangerously and also running away because, of course, it does. But at least having the Growlithe is better than not having the Growlithe. So while it is a bit annoying that that does happen, uh, at the very least, the Growlithe is here. And as long as it just stays in the bowl, you don't really care for its experience. It's not giving you that much experience anyway. Or at least that much relevant experience, at least I don't think, but... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is also very interesting, like, from what I can gather from when learning from, like, top runners. It's like, what Pokémon should you actually, like, spend time making sure that you get an excellent versus what time... What Pokémon you shouldn't spend just, like, being like, just, just throw it and get it in. It's like... Doesn't matter. Just, just get it in. The only advantage of getting experience on the Growlithe is if you can get it to level 18 prior to uh prior to the the first picnicker uh you the flamethrower is not a range at least less of a range than i remember it being <laughs> i think yeah like i just know that's an experience on Growlithe is useful. 17 range 18 not a range mm -hmm. that's all i remember uh, Mocha Jones is using the Moonstone on the, um, Wiggly. on Jigglypuff. It is something that Pikachu can do and should do. Uh, because, oh, sorry, Eevee can and should do. Oh, there's an Abra! He's just getting Ooh. everything. Caleb is just getting everything. This boy is actually paying him off, like, really nicely. Yeah, like, Abra is, you know, the nice two for one. The only iffy side is you are using a lot of Great Balls. But I think, yeah, no, JLF is the one that bought extra Great Balls anyway, so it's not the end of the world not having to use these extra Great Balls here. But you know what? It's fine. Should be yep. fine. And, you know, it's one less catch you have to worry about. It's one less catch that you can scratch off, you know, like in Rock Tunnel or Route 10. Like, if you don't see... Uh, the second set of Nitos, or Spiro, or Cubone, or whatever. Yeah, you know. so, it is definitely a nice thing. It's not something we want to get, as I, if I remember correctly, Abra is a 5% to spawn mm -hmm. here. So, it's not something that we kind of go for, and also, it does have its little gimmick that if it sees you, it just goes, my people need me. I must go. So, it just runs away, so. Yep. But, aside from that, Aside from that, Abra's definitely nice to see, and, you know, JLF pay, pay, being paid off incredibly well for um, getting here. And having the Growlithe for these next two fights is going to make it's gonna make these next two fights a lot easier, as well as if Raihorn chooses not to show its face, which has happened to some of our runners in, during this tournament, uh, at least JLF does have a nice backup. Yeah. But enough of the obvious uh, Pikachu bias. Uh, Mocha Jones taking on the second camper on Route 9 as Burner goes into the boat rival fight. Y yep. Bad known as Rival 3. And numbers are fake. Uh, are you sure about that? Uh, last time I checked that there's a number right next to all of our numbers, is, all of our runners is, uh, 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 names. In fact, one of our name, one of our runners has a number, so I don't think numbers are fake. Personal. I mean, I have a degree in math. I think I'm it's allowed. Like, yeah, numbers is the universal language. You show someone a number, they know it. Unless they don't know numbers, in which case, that's a, but that's a separate problem. Wait, Bell's not knocked out? Wait, oh! Oh, I just realized this e this burner's Eevee slow. Mm. Because like, why did Weeping Bill die? Oh, Pidgey must have went for the. Well, Pidgeot must have went for uh, an attack. So here comes Route Ten. E everyone's least favorite route, I okay. think. Uh, we've got the uh, Nidoran male. We've got a Firo guarding 
its child. Yep. Uh, do be a little bit careful here, as if you do go for great plus premier great, it's not kind of guaranteed to get in, but, you know, that's okay, I guess. But, so, for Route 10, Mocha just want both Pikachu and Eevee want the same thing, but Pikachu really wants Anita, whereas Eevee can kind of just be like, if Eva, if Anita doesn't spawn, we're fine. Yeah. Kinda. There's backup strats for Pika if you don't see Anita. They're a little spicy. Uh, I would like but... to know what they are. Because I do not know them, and I would like to know, because uh, <laughs> they would have been great in one of my runs, instead of having to, like, go and despawn all the other Pokemon. Yeah, so... <sighs> I mean, first and foremost, you know, you can, you can make do with either Nito. Yeah. Yeah, no. We want either, yeah. it's just we want one. Yes. Um, and, like, I know that Growlithe has helping hand, so, you know, any of the fights where it's just Nito is a friend using helping hand, you can get by. And I know there's a bunch of strats that if you have Nito King, you're supposed to... Uh, use the Nido King or two see it with Pikachu, but if you have Nido Queen, you just one see it with P with just Pikachu. Yeah, interesting and... to see that Mocha does burn his repel early to find things, and just one thing is spawned. It's like, but Lord right. does work. Okay, there we go. Yeah, like for for Mocha, this is a little less uh, important on as an EV runner, but. At the same time, you know, getting the crab spawn is really nice. That's an another two catches locked away in your back pocket. It is technically slow, but it's like there really isn't much of a repli much of a replacement for when it comes to mm -hmm. uh, crabs. Uh, it's yeah. also just like there's no other place you can get it. So it's like if you see a crab, you may as well just go get it. And from what I've heard from other experienced EV runners, experience is king. So if we do see mm -hmm. an Ideally, the, the earlier you can learn Double Edge, uh, the better. So we do yep. kind of want to see big experience things from all of our runners. Well, all of our EV runners. As... Yeah. And like, Pikachu never suffers from extra experience, but it's not nearly as critical. N well, no, I mean, I wouldn't say critical, i just say more useful because... Mm -hmm. um, because the only time where it's like having a lot of experience really early helps is if you can get Thunderbolt by Misty. Mm -hmm. That yeah. helps. Yeah. And but other like, than that, for Pikachu, it's mostly just playing around ranges. And also just helping that your friends show up. Mm -hmm. That's like the more important thing for Pikachu. Like, yep. not having Chansey or not having, um, or like, a fable spawn or just not having these big experience things is not the end of the world for Pikachu. I mean, you're never complaining when they do show up, but <laughs> oh, JLF getting the double crab spawn. That's, I mean, crab is crab is better than no crab. True, but yeah, and like at the end of the day, we do have to get 50 Pokemon. No individual Pokemon is guaranteed to spawn outside of, like, the event Pokemon. So, like, at the end of the day, a Pokemon in a Pokeball is worth two in the tall grass. Yeah. It does depend on, you know, there are some Pokemon that people will say I will never get, uh, mainly uh, Onyx. Yep. And for some people, Kangaskhan, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah, when you see a Pokemon, you want to see Pokemon. And it's also an interesting difference to see which Pokemon is more of a... Like, I want this for experience versus I want this because it's just a catch. And Raticate is one of those examples of this is a great Pokemon for experience. Should have Mocha have gotten an excellent. Mm -hmm. I will never get Zapdos. Funny that you should say that because I actually decided to go into the Let's Go History Vaults. Zapdos used to be the strap before Stormy. Fun fact. Too, too far out of the way? Can you fly to the Rock Tunnel Poké Center? I don't know, but that was... I remember that... I remember just, like, having a look one day and having a look at some of the people's PBs. People who, like, decided to run the game once and... in back in the old times. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, Zapdos was the strat.
All right, okay. I, I guess we're now starting to say which Pokemon we would never be catching, but let's be more realistic. We're never going to get a Goldeen or a Dratini because we're not going for it because they don't spawn for us. Look. Conven in convenient locations. I will never catch a Kyogre and let's go. Okay. <laughs> I don't think... It spawns here at all. Last time I checked. The last time I believe, uh, Kanto's have its really strict borders and only allows counter Pokemon in Kanto. Look, I, all I know is the other day, Combs was talking about getting a Fluttermane as the starter. So I don't know. I figured everything was on the table now. Unfortunately, uh, Let's Go has very good border control. Because apparently, because here's the thing, apparently any, when it comes to one of the gym leaders, any Pokemon is cute, but we can only get, um, we can only, but, uh, we can only confirm that for counter Pokemon. We can't confirm that for anything else. And Phoenix, Phoenix, you brought up a good point. Here's a counter argument. That's three years in the future, where they've relaxed the border controls. That is true. There are a low in Pokemon in here. Uh, they got Nibby. I'll argue that Beltan is a Kanto Pokemon by that metric, but the low in forms. Yeah, they got Nibby. That's a compelling argument. I think we should probably just stop having a control border control and get into uh, one of the biggest reset points in any Let's Go speedrunning. Uh, aside from Starter and aside from Mount Moon. It's called Rock Tunnel. Well. Uh, Cubone right away. Cubone right away is great, but here's what we want to see right away. Rhyhorn. Rye. We want it because... Rhyhorn. Because, uh, its name means that you could ride on it, which is very good because there's no bicycle in this game, but there is faster ways of moving. And mm -hmm. one of the fastest ways to move is by using someone else's legs, not yours. Yeah, I mean, you've already been running all over Kanto today. I bet, I bet by now our run runner's character's legs are getting kind of tired. Yeah, but we also, yeah, but it's also very good for experience, but we want to see, you know, actual Rhyhorn, like, spawn. Mm -hmm. It also is very important for Eevee as it is primarily its secondary Pokemon, unless you have a few people who use Nido strats, which Mocha is not one of them because we did not eat because both of the Nidos already been deposited. So it is important. Thankfully, the replacement for um, Rhyhorn, you can just do the same thing with Graveler, but it's just more awkward. You'd rather yep. see you ra you rather see Rhyhorn. If not, you're gonna have to uh, take something called the Walk of Shame and hope that Ponyta spawns as fast as it can. Uh, JLF is in a good spot, though. Um, Pikachu has a little bit of an easier time if we do not see the Rhyhorn, uh, because we'll just evolve a Growlithe into an Arcanine and yeah. ride that instead. In fact, uh, most moder modern strats involve doing that regardless. Wait, really? Uh, yeah, so you just pick up the Firestone I mean... on your way over... And you don't replace the Rhyhorn until you get to tower, but... Also, I just realized, Mocha, when he just entered and after catching the Cubone, has 29 caught. Yeah, that's... that's a lot. Like, that's actually just, like, st stupid as to how many Pokemon. He does yeah. have, like, what, two more things he needs? Well, actually, three. a few more things he needs to catch. He still needs Machop. He still needs... Um... The Rhyhorn, of course, and also needs the Graveler. Uh, speaking yeah. of one of those three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but at this point, you know, if I'm Mocha, I'm starting to think about, like, okay, what can I get away with not catching? I mean, you could probably get away with not catching Machop, but he's here already, so we, yeah. can, we can forget that story. You could, it probably just means that you can kind of just say goodbye to... You don't have to worry about if Ghastly chooses not to spawn. You can also mm -hmm. probably say goodbye to either Coughing or Doduo or Psyduck. Yep. And it also means you don't have to deal with Tentacle later. So you know what? We'll take those. Yeah. Like, as, as I am always saying, 
any let's go run where I don't have to catch Tentacool is a good one. Okay, I mean, I want to make, I want to bring the argument of I don't think Tentacles that bad. You just have to be patient. You know, fair. But if I wanted to be patient, I wouldn't be trying to play the game fast. I mean, oh, I mean by patient, I mean just it doesn't seem to spin or, or go left or right too many times, at least from my experience. But also, mm -hmm. just, just swag throw. Right, if you want to go fast. So, yeah, it's a skill issue. Wow. That doesn't mean I'm always going to go for it, but I think it's like, I think people are just saying, like, oh, it's such a bad catch. I say it's a slow catch, but not mm -hmm. a bad catch. True. But, you know, like, honestly, at the end of the day, uh, if I, like, if I can get my surfboard catches down to just star you, I'm happy. It's. Yeah. Like, yeah, uh, you know, having it's the increased how, how from the second Pokeball is always yeah. nice. Yeah, but it's also great to see how fast the runners are going for, especially so some of the throws that people are going for. Like, mm -hmm. it's always interesting to see how people have learned to go for like fast throws for certain Pokemon. Like, fast throw Machop is, I think, something that not many people go and do normally. But it's nice to see that you know more and more runners that are you know newer to the game starting to get. Le starting to learn these uh, more interesting, like uh, understanding Pokemon cycles, which is a bit tricky to understand sometimes. Like, do some Pokemon attack immediately? Do some Pokemon be like, I'm gonna be chill and you can kind of just throw? Do some Pokemon jump or is that Pokemon called Zubat and just becomes annoying no matter what happens you do? Right. And like, it is definitely something that I feel like I still am working on as time goes. Oh, I'm working on it too. Like, today I learned that. For Bulbasaur, you should just wait. Oh, there's there's a Rhyhorn. There's the first Rhyhorn of the uh, Let's go. Rock Tunnel variety. Uh, pretty late for this right. Well, not too late. It's like third room Rhyhorn, which is you know not bad. And this is a good chunk of experience, but it, again, the main reason is you want to get the you want to get the ride. <laughs> Uh, oh, JLF is having a, what we like to call Joy-Con moment. <sighs> you hate to see yeah, it. It, it. This is this is a Joy-Con moment. And he chooses to give up on getting the Cubone. I guess being 29, you don't really need the Cubone, but yeah, that's a lot of bullet wasted. <laughs> up, up, oh, right, I'm a chop. I thought that was a right one. one. <laughs> it was just very quick. And it looks like Burner is cleaning up on Route 10. Uh, we're three for three on crabs today. We like crabs. Yeah. It's time for crab. And this crab, oh, okay, that's annoying. Don't you just love when you decide to wait and then it, and the moment you decide to throw the ball and decides to attack? We love, we, we love, let's go for that. Right, like... Honestly, I feel like every single time I'm like, okay, I'm gonna wait. No, actually, I'm just gonna go for it. That's exactly when the Pokemon decides to attack. That's an interesting decision to go for 2P on Kangaskhan. I guess it kind of makes sense. It's not really. I mean, if you went for Double X Special, then I wouldn't think that 2P kind of makes sense, but... Yeah, I get... Did, did JL have summoned the second player immediately? Or well, maybe he just it... forgot to unsummon it. That could also be the case as well. Yeah. I think that's more likely the case of doing this. It's like, normally you don't do this fight uh, 2P, you just do it 1P. But, you know, sometimes yeah. you try to unsummon and the Joy-Con just says, nope, we're not unsummoning you. And sometimes you're so focused on like, okay, you know, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. There's a lot of s spoons you gotta juggle in a let's yeah. go run. Especially also when you have to try and also remember, think about when should you deposit and when you shouldn't deposit. This area becomes a bit like daunting when it comes to be when it comes to like the amount of stuff you have to do. It's like, oh, yep. when should you deposit? And it's like this like this kind of like flow chart that you have to like think about in your head and being like, oh, I should do this now. Oh, I should do this now. I should do this now. Especially Eevee when it comes to later, when it comes to, like, the fights. I know for mm -hmm. a fact that, this, that the Eevee has, like, 
a lot more flow charts when it comes to what Pokemon and what fights you do compared to Pikachu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, especially the sections coming up. Yeah, there's a strat if you have bad attack. There's a strat if you have bad special. There's a strat if you're both. There's a strat if you're low level. There's a strat if you're everything bad. And there's also a strat if you're everything good. And then Pikachu's over here just going, haha, Thunderbolt, go girl. Well, not quite. It's... I mean, uh, for, for the, it, it feels like that in comparison. Well, no, Rocket High... I don't know what, who's worse in Rocket High. Now. Like, Rocket High... Like, Rocket Pikachu doesn't even use thun uses Thunderbolt in one fight in Rocket Hideout. You know, that's fair. Actually, no, but it uses two. It uses two. One, and they're both on the same fight in Archer. Like, every other fight, it uses Nido King to do the work. Or it uses Raihorn to do the work. Or I mean, it uses Nido King to help out. There's that's also, the you know, the, the Grimer fight that's guarding the key. The lift key. There's actually, three different ways you can do that in Pikachu that oh, yeah. I found. Yeah, the, the, these days I just go for the Rhyhorn strats. I, it's probably slower, but I just like setting up my fight in my party for J and J right away. Yeah. So far, I think only one of our runners have seen a Rhyhorn, which is right now Mocha. Which is right now the rich is getting richer. Uh, that's a let's go experience. Uh, yeah, so I believe Mocha has everything that he needs in here. And let me just double check the tracker. Yes, he has everything in here, leaving with a catch count of 34. Assuming nothing else evolves. Nothing else evolves. Jeez. Which That's... is pretty high. Like, I've always said that 30 is, like, okay. 34 is good. Right. I think Pikachu can kind of go with like a slightly lower from experience simply because you all you have an Arcanine that's just ready to evolve at some point. Mm -hmm. And well, that's about it. Yep. Like everything else is basically the same. You've got your two optionals, you've got you know, no other real version exclusives to worry about at the Except stage like of the game. Pokemon catches, but because you know, Growlithe is a Po Pikachu exclusive and uh, yeah. EV is a Vol as Vulpix, which is uh, infinitely much worse. Yeah, and like you know, if you have the Vulpix uh, on the EV side, you can always pick up the Firestone in Pokemon Mansion to get that out to get that to balance out. Whereas Pikachu is very locked yeah. into getting the early Firestone here outside of Lavender Town. There is like one scenario where you do not pick up that Firestone. Which is, you don't have Growlithe, and you have Rhyhorn, and you're gonna be like, you know what, I don't need Arcanine. I will just get an early Ponyta instead, and just skip Growlithe. Should you do that? No, but it is a strat that you can do. Yes. And honestly, the fact that there are these so many different strats for Let's Go is one of the reasons I cannot stay away from it as a speed game. I mean, I can't be- I only come to this game now once a year because of the race, and that's it, personally. Mm -hmm. Simply because, uh, at high level, there's only really one good strat. In races, there's, like, multiple different strats that we can see our runners do, but when it comes to, like, grinding for a time, it's like, you want the one strat, and, and if you don't get it, well, you're, you're, you're back to the lab. Yep. But I mean, like, you know, there are multiple different ways of thinking about performing speedruns as well. Your, and like, your run is as dead as like... the Pokemon in this graveyard that Mocha Jones is now currently fighting rival for. That, that's the transition. Uh, yes. This fight is uh, pretty simple, I think. It's like X special and then X attack, I think. X special, Buzzy Buzz, and then X attack, Sisley side for mm. Eevee. And using the power of Eevee's massive type cover, you can... Um, deal with um with uh yeah just with all the rival fights and i think like what what's the right choose right or is it do you oh do you like headbutt drill run or is it headbutt x attack uh, headbutt drill run yeah that makes a lot more sense yeah whereas on the pikachu side uh because glf has nido king we're just going to pump the nido king full of x attacks and let Poison Jab do most of the work Ooh. after Thunderbolting the Pidgeotto. 
you know what, JLF? I, I, I agree. That, that, uh, Raihorn spawn is in a very awkward spot. I probably wouldn't have gone for it either. That does mean you are having to do, uh, early Arcanine strats, which does have some downside to it, which... Actually, what is the downside? It's like, you have to walk to the Firestone. That's about it. Yeah, yep. Like, you walk to the Firestone, um... Oh, wait, no, uh, Jesse and James 2, Jesse and James 2 is uh, a worse fight. Yeah. You, you have to go with the old school strats there of, like, pulling out some, a different sacrifice poke. Yeah, pulling out a sacrifice Pokemon. And I don't wow. know if Arcanine qualifies. No, Arcanine, no, Arcanine does qualify. It depends on where you get your Growlithe. Mm. If you get your Growlithe in Route six like you're normally supposed to it does count because it's like level 17 against level a bunch of level 20s mm. but if it's um be level 20 growlith then the answer is no yeah which luckily we do know uh jlf has the low level growlith because yeah got it on the backswing but uh, i believe that's his right horn and if so he also doesn't have to do cringe strats for eevee Without Rhyhorn. <laughs> because, uh, I be yeah, I believe he's like, yeah, from what I've heard, Graveler is a suitable replacement, and the only advantage of having Graveler is you can do boom strats, but that's about it. Which is very much good beginner strats if you're learning Eevee, because you don't mm -hmm. have to worry about, uh, Persian at all. Anyway, I do not believe Mocha Jones has level 28 yet, so we are going to be seeing the first metronome of a speedrun unless Headbutt doesn't flinch. Growl. Wait. That might not kill. Okay, never mind. I was hoping. I was hoping for more metronome shenanigans, but that's fine. Now Eevee gets level 28, and we he gets the most powerful, a really powerful move that Eevee gets, which is Double Edge. A 120 base power physical move that does do weird cold damage to yourself. So the advantage of having double edge is that you just absolutely murder everything in your path. Downside, you have to do a lot more healing than you would like to. And I've actually learned the other day that the threshold of whether or not you should or shouldn't teach double edge is can you get double edge before, um, what is it? Before Hypno. If you get double edge before Hypno, you should teach it. If you don't get double edge before Hypno, don't teach it. Interesting. Yeah, from what I've heard from T-Pad, that is the threshold because every other fight does not matter. Okay. After double edge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Phoenix in chat saying preferably before Clefairy. I mean, yeah, that way you don't have to deal with metronome shenanigans, but I think it's like... Where's, like, the earliest that, that I think, like, Double Edge is, like, really, like, candy? I, I forgot what it was, but, ha like, I think one of our runners in the, in the previous race had it before the Kangaskhan. Oh, dang. In, in uh, you know, Rock Tunnel. And, you know, that's pretty, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, being able to one-hit KO a Kangaskhan, I think that's pretty good. Yep. But there is, like, a, a lot of different interesting... Uh, mana. So we've gone through the catching section, the biggest, one of the biggest catching sections in the entire game. Now it's time for one of the bigger fight sections in the game, which is better known as Rocket Hideout. And, uh, you know, people have a love-hate relationship with Rocket Hideout. I mean, Sylphco is bad, but Sylphco is only bad because of that one fight. Every other fight's fine. Mm-hmm. Whereas Rocket yeah, Hideout has more of, like, scary fights, regardless of which version that you're running. Yep. But yeah. Like, the, 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 the only doing... fight that I would call not scary on the Pika side is Giovanni himself. <laughs> it's scary if you are minus attack. That's all I'll say. True. True. But even then, it's like... It's fine and put, like, the biggest amount of quotation marks in fine. <laughs> uh, Mocha uh, in... 
final move, and depending on which move they replace it with, you will we get an indication of what strats they're going for. Since Mocha replaced it over Buzzy Buzz, we I believe Mocha is going to go for the advanced strat for um, mm -hmm. EV, which is Sizzly Side the Persian. Mm -hmm. And you know, hope you don't get crit or something along those lines. JLF, um, we will not be seeing a uh, metronome from JLF side as Poison Jab just uh, says goodbye to Clifford Hurry. Because turns out, fairy types exist in this game. There's like two in the entire game. T technically, there's like more both of the loading forms, but in the actual game, there's like two. So if you actually want to play Hardbow in this game, play fairy types, because every single other enemy trainer has poison types, so have fun. God, right? I mean, it doesn't help that, you know, the evil team is basically poison-themed. I oh, yeah, know, it's, they have Zubats, they have, it's like, the, the entire thing is Zubat, Weezing, Mux. Yeah, essentially poison is the evil thing, because yep. Doc didn't exist yet. Poison and rats. Poison, I mean, that's technically just any sewer system anyway. Yeah. Fair. And, you know, Team Rocket operates in shady areas. What's more, sh what's more shady than sewers and casinos? A casino in a sewer. Well, we actually don't see any sewers in this game, so I, I don't get know why we say that. But here's, a, but here's a casino that's actually part of a Mafia boss boss thing. No one, I think that's not surprising to anyone that a casino is owned by a Mafia. Right. Oh, that's a Imagine. burn on EV. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, that, that full pix is rough. Regardless of which version you're playing on, that Vulpix in particular will burn you and make you sad. Well, but, well, it will burn you if you're doing 1P. If you're doing 2P like most Pika runners do, then mm -hmm. that Vulpix is not an issue. Yeah. You exit back, you zippy zap, it's dead. Bye, we don't need to see you. Yes. So... We do have um, to go through the rocket hideout simply because uh, we do. It's kind of like this interesting back and forth that we have to do. That is extremely interesting. Putting the burn heal in front, expecting to see a lot more burns, but you know what? Uh, but, but obviously that's a, that's a mistake in the menu. So I'm, I'm not critiquing that much. But yeah, uh, JLF uh, also doing uh, something we haven't mentioned yet: uh, synchronizing Pokemon natures to all be modest. This will be great because it reduces the amount of variance on Starmie. I mean, do we really need to do? I mean, I'm, I'm joking. We do. <laughs> like, like, if you want an extra one in twenty-five to get to get a good star, be my guest. But yeah, so yeah, Rocket Hideout is a little bit of an interesting thing. Also, Etienne, thank you for so much for the raid. We appreciate that. Uh probably have. The entire French support is now coming to JLF right now, which is, you know, great to see. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so Rocket Hide, Rock, Rocket Hider, we need to do this because we need to get some special glasses so we can see Ghost, so that we can then go to Pokemon Tower, so then we can go get a flute, so that we can move Snorlax out the way. That's pretty much the main reason why we have to do this entire detour. Like, because uh, Snorlax is just sitting in our way and we can't do anything about it. Sadly. It's like, it's not like we can't just, I don't know, use a fighting type Pokemon just to deal with it, but you know. Yeah. And it's not like in the original Gen 1 games when you could just use a Pokedoll on the ghost that's covering our way and just do that thing anyway and skip the entirety of Rocket Hideout. We actually have to do Rocket Hideout. They patched it, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ooh, wait, hold on. Okay, I was I was a bit scared because I saw Mocha Jones as an EV being at like what 14 HP. But I was like, I guess this fight is like fine for EV because you have psychic coverage. Mm -hmm. I do not know what like the strat for grammar is for EV typically. I was like, I saw X special glitzy glow here, but I was like, I guess there's like 
specific strats that specific people do. It's just the only thing we... That grab is only scary because we do not want to see uh, the word, the move minimized because it's... Yep. Dub, it's, I would like to say, twice as bad as a um, remove double team. <laughs> yeah. So that is actually one of the interesting things about double edges. Like, it's kind of like this risk reward of being like, yeah, you get to knock out anything you like. Problem is that you kind of need to shove super potions, which does mean that a lot of EV runners tend to not have a lot of supers by the time, by the second half of the mid game. Or well, I guess technically the end game starts when you switch mains, and it does make one fight a bit scarier. So we have seen some runners go for an early shop in some situations, which you know, very interesting to see how race new race strats get developed throughout this entire yeah. tournament. And there is also a backup hyper potion on the second to top floor of Pokemon Tower that I've also seen get recommended to pick up. Yeah. Especially if you have, like, what, two supers left, and then you have to do yeah. the worst fight in the game with only two supers. Does not sound like the most ideal? On... Wow, that's... Did that EV turn around? Because if it did, that is extremely early. Uh... On Burner's side? On Burner's side, yes. <sighs> I didn't notice, but at the same time... We, obviously, we know that Burner had the issue with Misty earlier, so it's entirely it possible. The Thunder Punch Paralysis, great. Jeez. Yeah, and Burner's had like to use a lot of extra healing. Yeah, I guess that's also like a bit of a disadvantage for Eevee side because you have to use so many healing items. The turnaround animations start to happen a lot faster for. Mm. EV than it does for Pikachu. Also, I was... Yeah, that is another way that you can actually do that puzzle. There's actually two ways you can do the puzzle that Mocha Jones is doing right now, and that is either go up or go down. Go left or go down. Then they're both the exact same amount of time and use the exact same number of warp, warp, uh, well, spinning tiles, so... But if you do the one your commentator isn't expecting, they will have a bit of a moment... Yes. Not calling myself out or anything. Oh no, you just called the both of us out. Because <laughs> I only saw that once yesterday in Teapot, in like Teapot doing a practice run. I'm like, I did not know you can just do that way. I'm never going to do it that way, but I didn't know you can do it that way. Yeah. Like, if it was faster, I would take the time and effort to break my muscle memory, but since it's identical, no, no, I do, I, I do it my way. Yeah. I do it my way because if not, uh, I guess it's gonna be like I'm probably gonna be doing it wrong. Like I've hit that warp cutter. I didn't know you can just go down, so I've always picked up that item, which is the TM for rest. For those mm. who don't know, just to fix myself. Yes, I know that TM is rest. I picked it up once. That's a lie. I picked it up at least three times by now, but it doesn't matter. Yep. Anyway, uh, here's uh, J and J. Oh my God, is another paralysis on the Eevee. J and J uh, two, uh, arguably considered to be the second worst J and J fight in the entire game, because J and J three exists. Yeah, mostly I was just like thinking, okay, but is J and J J and J four is obviously the best one. Yeah, J and J one is the second worst one. It's a, it's it's three two one four. That sounds right, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for Pikachu, for Eevee, it's kind of just Eevee, Glitzy Glow, and Drill Run stuff. Depending on, um, I guess, your stats on Eevee and your stats and level on Rhyhorn, you kind of pick which one you want. I think like the Eevee strat is slightly safer because Glitzy Glow, at the very least, gives you a special defense buff, which well, gives you Light Screen, which means that the Weezing is not going to do much damage. Pikachu has two separate strats, depending on, do you have Rhyhorn? If the answer is yes, Rhyhorn strats, which is a uh, setup Rhyhorn. Ah, but JLF does not have Rhyhorn. So, we're actually gonna see uh, JLF actually withdraw a fairy. You could even do a fairy or a grass type Pokemon, because they both are weak to poison. But I'm pretty certain that I've done this before, that Arcanine is perfectly fine at level 18. If it was damaged, you'd absolutely use Arcanine, but 
I guess JLF is not confident that uh, Arcanine would work. I think Arcanine does work, but I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. And of course, these were the strats we used to use way, way, way back in the day. You know, uh, the yeah, live word strats had to actually get developed. I mean, didn't, didn't back in the day you go Rhyhorn? You want you want Rhyhorn because of the movement, but I guess you didn't want to use it in any of the fights. Wait, Clefable? Okay. I mean, that's very good for JLF, for Clefable living with the power of love. Yeah. Uh, and Clefairy and Clefable both have unusually high affection. Um, I am so, uh, it is very, it is much more like, common for this is like them a, to a, live. You can, X, you can actually X, I would have actually X specialed again, that way the Weezing is guaranteed probably dead next turn with a plus four Thunderbolt helping hand, but that was just my opinion. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with you. That, that is the play I would have gone with. Uh, yeah. The Nitto King was high enough HP that healing it didn't take it out of a range. Um, yeah. And now you have to heal. Yeah. Well, I, I guess you kind of risk the helping hand and then heal afterwards, I think, is what I would do first. Fair. Yeah. I guess it also I'll depends on how hand, good yeah. your... If you used the special last turn then that would have been a KO. But now I guess you... Yeah. The problem is you have to now go to the menu twice anyway. Also, mm. do you want a lot of fun fact that I've learned the yes. other day? Hit me. You know the poison? You know the poison the poison color on the, the poison text? Yep. It is a different shade of purple whether if you are toxic or non-toxic. <laughs> I have learned that the other day. Interesting. It is... It, the top, the poison on toxic poison is a slightly darker purple. In fact, uh, while uh, Leggy decides to, you know, talk a little bit about uh, Giovanni, I'm gonna find a screenshot of it just to make sure that I'm not, but just to make sure right. that I'm proof, proof to people. Yep. Give me one. So, uh, runner update, burner. In Celadon City, learning Glitzy Glow, about to go to the Rocket Hideout. Uh, JLF on Archer 1, doing the classic uh, 2C strat here. At this point, not having a Rhyhorn for JLF doesn't matter. Mocha burned the Persian, did not get crit. Um, going to go into the Rhyhorn, which should just be a fairly easy bouncy bubble. Um, Cubone leveling up, getting very soon. Uh, but yeah, like, looking at the catch counts, all of our runners are fairly close to each other in the grand scheme of things. You know, four catches is, does seem like a lot, but it's not insurmountable. Um, Krabby evolving, uh, for Mocha. Oh yeah, a little fun fact about the Golbat is that in Pikachu side is if you are minus speed, the Golbat is the only thing that outspeeds you. And I literally mean the only thing. And JLF doing my favorite strategy in the entire run coming up here, which is a uh, plus six helping hand double kick Oko's rival. Yep. Unless you're minus attack, in which case it's a range. How bad of a range? Uh, depends on how many attack AP. And if it's zero, I do not know because I do not keep track. It also depends on your level because there's just a lot. You know, fair. But it's just that I just know that minus attack is not guaranteed, but new short is. Mm -hmm. Also, what do I post this? Uh, if I do uh, general, I'm going to post that. There, I'm to figure out. Uh. There we go. So I posted in the in the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee race Discord that the poisons are different colors. And if you like are watching this and you're like, hey, I want to try out this run. Feel free, pop on in. You know, 
everyone I've talked to in, in, in the Pokemon Let's Go speedrunning community has been wonderful. Y'all are amazing. We, we love new people. And I believe every single runner featured today has o have only very recently started learning this run. Yeah. It is a you bit of a shame next. that I do believe that for all of our runners, because this is the 110 points for all of our runners, uh, these will probably be, unless 7 is guaranteed in, it has a chance to get in, 7 point will be their last races in the tournament, this one. Because for those who don't know how, how our tournament structure works, uh, only those who have a chance to get into Top Cut will be able to play, will be able to race in the next round. So, huh. and I, as of I, right I now... We doing... I thought we were doing the full race four. No, it is written in the rules that only those who have a chance to uh, qualify for the finals will do race four. So right now, the point threshold is eight minimum to get into top cut. But if there's a chance that seven can get in and one of our one point runners wins, they have a chance of getting in the next. That's a goal batten tower. Oh yeah, it, it says that right there in the rules. Yeah. Uh, round four will function the same as rounds two and three, except for the fact that those who are mathematically eliminated from being able to make the top nine bracket will not participate in this round. Yeah. Um, hot take. I think we should still do uh, races for everyone who gets eliminated, just not restreamed. We, we can go off and have fun on our own. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's fine. It's just that the races will not... Race the reason we're just not in this round. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but yes, it does depend on, of course, you know, there's still more races to come, including uh, one that I will be doing, which is actually the last race of the round. But yeah, that is something to. That is a Tower Cubone. We've seen Golbat and Cubone before we've seen. Um, before we've seen uh, Ghastly. That's mm -hmm. something. Why is, why is the ghastly just like special when it comes to spawning? It's like, it wants to be different. I have no idea. Like, from what I can, uh, from what I've heard, you know, Pokemon Tower is just weird compared to every other area in the game where Pokemon can spawn. I think it has to do with just like the narrow corridors. And it might just be something as silly as Ghastly's model size is large enough that it's hard to find a place to put it in the map that's valid. I guess so. That which could is, also be a legitimate reason. Which is why I feel like in the area that Mocha just stepped into where the cutscene happens, you, I, I tend to find Ghastly being much more common to spawn up here than elsewhere. There's just a lot more room for it. Yeah, I want to make a counter argument. I've seen Haunter more spawn down than up for some reason, and I'm pretty sure Haunter's bigger. I had a Haunter literally spawn on top of me on the stairs up to the J and J fight. Why is Haunter more common than Ghastly? That shouldn't be right. It it feels like it, and also one of the funniest statistics that I know to be true because everything I've said before that. Outside of the Haunter spawning on top of oh, me. a ghastly. And as a Haunter. Pure speculation. Um, but apparently, uh, Cubone is much more... Than true. Yeah, if you, if you look at the math, Cubone is more likely to spawn in Tower than it is in Rock Tunnel. Okay, now like, I think you're, you're smoking something. I... I swear. <laughs> wait, it... Wait. It's 10% here and 9% in ton- oh my- Uh, what's- oh wait, okay. the 1% That is way less of a difference than I thought it was going to be. To me, that's basically the same. That's the same- that's- that's essentially saying, oh, one's- one's a coin flip and one is 49%. It's like, no, but they're both 50-50, it's just yeah. one is slightly not. But, like, even if they're the same percentage to spawn, how many Cubones have you seen in Tower across all of the runs you've done. Like, not even ones where it mattered, but just total. I think, like, 
four, and I have like at least fifty so runs. Well, okay. To be fair, I have to count the one. I only have to count the runs that I actually get to the game because most of them either die at start or die somewhat die because Growlithe decided not to pop up. But yeah, exactly. Uh, but it's like so about. Let's say I've finished like what? Let's say I got like what? 20 yeah. or so runs there, so it's like, what, a 15? Well, I guess technically it's like 25% for me, but I know for a fact that that's not true. Yeah. Basically, I agree with Phoenix and chat, Tower is a scam. I think there's more things that are scams in this game than people think than people think realize. Tower is one of them. I mean, Tower is what? Tower is the scam for when you use a lore, but uh, I think Route 6 can, is a very big scam sometimes. Uh, Archer 2 is, is the biggest scam? scam of all time. Sorry? Archer 2 is the biggest scam of all time. Oh, yeah. And of course, well, Archer 2 is the second biggest scam of all time. The biggest scam. What, what are you going to say what the biggest scam is? Listen is here, folks. They tell you that each catch is 30 seconds, but that's a freaking lie. Oh, okay. I thought you were going to say that one of the versions was a scam. Nah, nah, I, I don't subscribe to version wars. They both have their benefits and detriments, and there's a reason both of them are about as fast as each other. And honestly, I, I think the differences in the way that Eevee plays versus Pikachu plays are really interesting and lead to, you know, a really cool choice for runners who are picking up this game for the first time if they haven't bought it before. Like, which playstyle do you like better? Do you like using Eevee to sweep through the early game? Or do you like the idea of having Pikachu and having all of the different partners that you're cycling through as you go? Hmm. That is, I guess, the interesting thing. It's just that I've been doing a bit of research on every single Pokemon game and to see what and seeing which version that uh is faster it's like let's go is one of the most interesting things where it's like there is like no consensus of like which version is like faster it's just mm -hmm. they're different but they're different enough that somehow the time save just ends up not being different there's probably someone who's going to be like one version is technically better because x y or z reasons but it's like no one can really tell or like say it's not like say Best example, Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. White 2 is superior in almost like night every single way because of mm. because the fact is that in White 2 there's one less required trainer fight as one of the main differences. So that's Chansey! another Chansey this, is like, yeah, this is four chances in a single speed run. Like, forget your version differences. Uh Mocha's on a wild cart. Uh, uh, what is the save fight? What is the specific save fight? This specific seed that Mocha has. This is the fourth one. Oh, this is making the highlight reel. <laughs> like, if there's, if there's one thing that this race is going to have a highlight reel, it's going to have a highlight reel of all four chances. Right. Because... And I think I already know what Dynam's um, round two uh, collage is going to be for, at least specifically Mocha. This is the fourth one. Most people are lucky just to see one. Mocha just has all... It's like, you're wondering where all the other chances are. Mocha has them, by the way. They just stole them from your files. <laughs> all right. I know who I need to go talk to. Be like, hey, Mocha. Well, how, how, how about, you know, we come to a deal. You know, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. You make a chance you appear in my next race. I owe you something or something. I don't know. Yeah, if Mocha can make a chance he spawn in my next race, but no one else's, then I would appreciate that. Yep. Uh, also, interesting double great on not switching to Ultra for do, do duo I, I still need to understand I think there might be some Pokemon where switching to ultra might be not only really not switching to ultra might be fine but I think it's like only the pitch 
Yeah. Oh, but speaking of boom strats, we're seeing a we're seeing a thing go boom. Let's go. Let's go. What's the command for doing the catch count cal calculation? I have no idea. Someone, so, someone who's smarter than me figures can figure that one out. I saw it in chat earlier. I just do not remember it. Uh, JLF, you do need a catch. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, you, know, you still need to catch stuff. Oh dang! Uh, Do Doduo is ninety-five percent on like double great. Two. Oh, oh, it's thirty-nine. Oh yeah, it is thirty. It this is higher level. Yes, it is thirty-nine. Still, ninety-three percent. Huh. I wonder if like some of the Pokemon might actually be fine. Like, well, since they're all thirty-nine, I have an idea. Da, 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 da. I'm just gonna copy this. I just want to know some other stuff. And while you're doing uh, a little bit of math, uh, over on Burner's side, we are on the Giovanni fight. Only does a 90%. Okay, that's good to know. Um, 1v1 with the Eevee. Looks like uh, Persian's down, Rhyhorn's down. We are through... The rocket hideout over on Burner's side. I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just curious about. It's like, why are we switching to Ultra Balls? I was like, these are very good. These are very good likelihoods of just getting in with double grade. Yeah. I mean, uh... going from you know ninety to nearly a hundred percent probably worth it in a lot of places. Okay. Okay, so Pidgey is like the only thing that you should actually just like take the 99. Yeah. And like, if for whatever reason you're low on ultras by now or you forgot to pick. Heck, I could see people starting to skip. Uh, if they really want to push, you start skipping the ultras and tower. Yeah, I mean. That might. Um, I mean, you probably shouldn't, but it's like. The, looking at this, it's like, maybe, it's like, you kind of have to wait for excellence, whereas if you just go ultra, you don't have to wait for excellence, so I guess it's like, that time save. But it's like, I guess it's like, if you really need to catch stuff. Right. If you really need to catch stuff, then I guess it's like, you're kind of, you kind of gl glad that you can at least have this option in your head of being like, double Great Ball. Yeah, now I'm curious. Ah, uh, yeah, 39 is not a catchable Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, Pidgey's guaranteed. I've done that one. Mm -hmm. With double greats? Double great, excellent, yes. Well, I was doing double great, nice. And it's not calculated that. I guess, like, the only thing I need to worry... I guess it's, like, the only thing I would probably ask is... Uh, Pidgeot is probably, like, the one thing I want to know. No, sorry, Pidgeotto. Uh, double great, nice, on Pidgey is, you know, 89. about 89. 89. Yeah. How do you spell, how do you spell the bud? I actually have no idea how to spell Pidgeot, but anyway, Mocha does get his pony, and actually, Mocha just can get star, and that's it. Yep. Like, Mocha's just done with catches. Yeah. There's the horse for JLF, as Burner is getting ready to go back into the tower. Yeah. The one difference between um, JL, uh, Eevee and Pikachu is that Eevee, you want to see Pony as soon as possible and grab candy immediately. Whereas for JLF, uh, because Arcanine is ever so slightly slower, you can actually wait to evolve mm -hmm. the... Um, the... 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 the for Ponyta, and actually, either A, optimally use the rare candies uh, to, with Star and Ponyta combined, so you don't have to menu twice, or Ponyta just gets enough experience anyway that you don't even have to use a rare candy on the Rapidash. Which means you can save picking up the candy from Lapras. Okay. Which is, you know, nice. Or just skip. Well, if you skip the Route 6 candy because you got nice luck, then mm. you could also 
potentially also skip Mansion Candy, just get all the optimal candies anyway. Because yeah, Route 6 candy is the what is the most unoptimal, but you're only doing that because you want to uh, you know, play safe. And also JLF doing the uh, safe strats for not hitting any spinner. Because if you don't know about the spinners, then doing what JLF did is absolutely like fair. That's what I used to do for a long time. Until oh, I same. That. Until I'm I learned the fact that every single person in Kanto needs uh, needs to go to an eye optician. Right? They're like not paying it. None of those traders are paying attention to you at all. It's wild. Yeah. It's kind of funny that it's like their line of sight is just like a pixel. Whereas you compare it to other games like the BDSP, there's like it's just like really big. Whereas in this game, it's just like really small. Right? Like because it's like the trader at the top of like Route 18, they should have seen you. Right? Yes, but small. like at the same time, you know, there are those trainers where their their vision line is just just a little longer than you think it is. Shoutouts to getting caught by the trainer outside of Rock Tunnel. Wait, which one? Uh the one right by the entrance if you go around and don't cut the bush. Oh that one, yeah. yeah. I've never actually uh Hit. I haven't. I actually haven't hit that, but that's because I kind of just go for the bush anyway. Because I've even seen Saiyan go for the bush strat anyway, even if it is like slightly slower. Uh, yeah, anyway, like, ten thirty-seven. Uh, I mean, CP for as, as, as we all know, CP is a scam. I no, it's okay. CP is actually a scam. Let's, let's be real. Yeah. What are they? I don't remember. I know someone's done it. I forget what the CP for a. 31 special attack, 31 speed, zero everything else star is. I do not know that either. I just know 900, it's bad. 1,100, it's good. Everything yep. else doesn't. It, it's meh. Like, the only thing I say that CP is not a scam is if we see 1,100, then you have very good stats. Unless mm. that stats is bad. What? Ooh, 1,013. Okay. That's also we we're having some pretty low stars today. It's not nine hundred, but you know it's uh we're getting down there. Well, like I said, it could just be max special attack and bad everything else. Oh, hi Tangler. Wait, I just realized something. If Pikachu can catch Vile Plume. Does that mean that there's a chance that an Eevee runner could catch Victory Bell? Maybe. I don't think anyone will actually do that, but... I just realized that that is a possibility. Yeah, like... I just don't think we've seen anyone actually go for it or even spawn, so... I guess we'll never find out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The fact that only Psyduck needs to evolve is actually kind of disgusting for Boca Jones. Wait. Like, it does not have, have to worry about anything in here. Well, well Magmar <laughs> tried. Yeah, Magmar wants to come along for the ride. Sorry, we're not doing Magmar strats today. Uh, well, maybe, maybe, maybe JLF might, but not Mocha. Yeah. I think Mocha's just, oh wait, no, Mocha's just going being like, we're fire blasting today, so... Uh, I may have scared all the Coliseum runners, so... Please come back. We only use it once. By the way, we have something worse. It's called Hydro Pump. And we're actually going to be seeing a star. I do not know star stats very well. Uh, we're actually seeing star for stats for both of our runners right now. So, because I was uh, not expecting JLF to do JLF special attack is not very good. Well, that's not great. Um, like it's still in the seventies at forty six. Where at? Oh, Mocha. If, if, if it's 70 is bad, then you know. Uh, yeah. Both of our runners are having a special attack of all time. I know someone just showed me the range of star uh, stats. So, uh, according to chat, <laughs> good news Mocha's fast. Uh, I mean, it's not nothing. But apparently, 
these are going to be interesting special attacks for both of our runners. Yeah, but Mocha and chat confirming fast star gross special attack. Yeah. yeah, like, usually you expect... Uh, mid to high 80s for special attack for, like, a decent star. Yeah, I mean, I do not know numbers for star you. I just be like, oh, star means when I need to actually know my numbers. Buffer record, right? Tell me what the numbers are. I just do not remember what the numbers do for star me because most of the time my runs don't get to that point. Yeah. I mean, all you need to know for star you is that if it starts with a seven, it's bad. And I guess if it starts with a nine, it's good. Yeah, I don't know if it can get up to nine, but. So, JLF has 109 special attack. Oh, jeez. Oh, also JLF, I am sorry. So, apparently, that is uh, not ideal. Yeah. Burner finishing up Poke Tower, getting the Poke Flute. What is that? Whoa. Uh, uh, Joy Con, are you okay? Thank you. Apparently, 109 special attack is apparently the lowest special attack. Yeah, the, the 109 special attack for a right, level JLF, 46 right. Starmie, that makes sense. Right. Ugh. This is something I recommend. For everyone who wants to catch Tentacle, step one, make sure you grab the silver razz before you catch Tentacle. If you don't, please use a raspberry. Step two, just... If it attacks, like it does right there, then I would still have, again, I still would have went for the Raspberry because, again, one player, one, the only reason why Tentacool sucks at catching is because of its 1P nature. But like I said, Raspberry would be the way that I would do it. It's a 50 50 if you get an Ultra with no circle. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, but if you go, but if you get circle, it's obviously going to be a lot better. It's a 50 50. I mean, that's. 43, uh, it is a 50-50, oh, I'm stupid, I can't read map, I yeah. can't read the map. Also, uh, shoutouts to the Starmie that spawned e on JLF screen. Yep. We even, you might think that, oh, getting that might not be a bad idea, but, uh, we don't learn Hydro Pump, so. Yep. That's the reason why we don't get it. I think. Is there another reason uh, why we don't get it? Aside from, like, being two catches? It's probably also a nightmare to catch. Probably. Because catch rate just plummets. Yeah, like it. And an, an excellent without a berry is a forty-three percent. Wait, why does Mocha say it's forty-nine? He mo he unlocked Porygon. What did he catch? I didn't see. Let's take a look. I will pull that up real quick. I think yeah, he, he's marked Goldock. But I don't think Go uh, Golduck has evolved. Yeah, he just he caught something that evolved the Golduck, and he just has two. He just he's not gonna get the Porygon. Huh? Huh? I interesting. I don't. I, I yeah. didn't see what he caught, but you know what? He just caught something extra and just realized. Yeah, don't need the Porygon. Technically, Lapras would be the more optimal skip if you're gonna skip, but you probably want the candy. So yeah. Need the candy actually need the candy of your Eevee. And if you want to go for uh, everyone's fan favorite Lapras strats, you obviously, you know, need the Lapras. Lapras. Yeah, like, I go back and forth about whether or not if I've got a Pokemon that evolves in one level versus Porygon versus Lapras. Like, I guess... I mean, I had a situation where apparently I was apparent it was just slower for me to go for uh, I had a Jigglypuff that spawned just before entering Silphco, and I was like, I had an Ultra Ball. I could probably just chuck up. I could probably just chuck the Ultra Ball and just catch the Jigglypuff instead mm. of getting the Lapras. But I guess, from what I've heard, that that was slower than just getting Lapras. Yeah. Because I didn't need the candy. I should say, right? That's the main mm. reason why I went for it. Apparently, according to people who know paces better than I do, 
Mocha actually has a chance for a sub 310 here. If, you know, nothing bad happens. But like I said, this special attack is, uh... The special attack for JLF, and I'm not sure about Mocha, but for JLF, it's like the worst special attack ever. For Mocha, it might just be slightly bad, slightly better than the worst special attack ever. Yeah, and th then the other thing you need to consider with Saffron, I guess, you know, if you skip Porygon, you can just run to the right and up straight to the Pokemart. Yeah. So. That is something to be noted, but I think the special, I think the bad special attack is going to be the big reason as to why. Uh, the oh, time yeah. is not going to be great, especially when it comes to the end game, where it's like, this is a special attack where it's like, you can risk one piece strats. You probably shouldn't. Is that another bonjour? I missed switch screen. I, I missed switch screen. It was on. Who 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 had who had the chancy? Who had another chancy? It's not. I know it's not Mocha, but this is like the fifth chancy now. Uh, JLF. JLF had a. Oh, it had the mansion chancy. So the emo actually makes more sense. Bonjour. That's like, what, five chances in this entire speed? That's absurd. That's actually stupid. Right? <laughs> Wait, what's a range? Apparently he missed a range somewhere. Or hit a range? I'm... No, if, uh, if I, that's I, a range... No, if you say that's a range, it means you missed one. Because here, everything's a one-shot with Scold. So something must be a range here. I think it's the might be, might be the Ninetales. That's mm. a range if you have bad special. Because I wasn't paying attention to Mocha Jones' screen. Yep. I was too busy trying to find a Chansey. <laughs> yeah, well, well, being like, Chansey? 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 All right, Bernard. Think, yeah, here's Dr. The Pony. Pony. It's like the only if the place you want a Chansey. Mount Moon. Route 6, Route 10 if you want to risk the coin club. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Now Mocha is going into the correct order of doing the gym, which is electric then grass. Mm -hmm. uh, some people have been doing interesting strats called like, what, like Vermilion Shop, which is if you have bad, if you have low supers, you buy. Uh, some extra, some hypers early, but in order to do so, you need to have one extra gym. So you do Erica first, and then uh, you do uh, Surge, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna these 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 runners are gonna have some fun times with uh, a very specific fight that no one likes later on yep. with these stars. But first, obligatory. Oh my God! How did Mocha find the right cans? No, it we, we're, we're RNG, not it's trying to fill the bingo now. board. Right? People have bingo. Ugh. But try not to do that. Look. I occasionally like playing into the memes. When it's I mean, funny. Do you really want to play into the meme of we have one joke? I mean... I know enough people who only have one joke, and I don't like associating with them. It's like, yeah, we it's like, yeah, we don't want to be the group of we have like we have six jokes and we're just going to share this. At least I'm trying to be creative when it comes to like, uh, like when it comes to like when it comes to like information and joke jokes nowadays. I used to be part of the bingo crew, but now it's like, let's actually try and be more, 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 oh, yeah. more interesting. It's like, yes, back in back in my day, the cans used to be somewhere else that now, now we have to be like save reset on front of the can just so that we are optimal but you got you kids got it so easy that, that, okay, that's grandpa, easy. let's get you to bed <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean I mean that's a that's a mean it's the same joke as before but you know yeah <laughs> like you know I changed it up a little bit. That, that, that's yeah, yeah. He, he, if you are going to mean, you got to put a twist on it. Yeah, that, that, let's do that. Speaking of speaking of uh, Mimi jokes, so the game thinks we've done all eight gym badges. Yep, we've not. By the way, we've done seven gym badges. We've not. By the way, imagine if there was a skip to go into Giovanni early, but nope. The game is clever enough. 
Yeah. Yeah, please correct myself. It's not eight, it's seven. I can And, like, it. honestly, I really love the fact that, you know, the overworld movement isn't tied to badges. In this version, it allows for some really interesting things. Otherwise, we would... Like, can you imagine if you had to beat Koga to get Surf, but oh. also you had to catch 50 Pokemon? Can you imagine how atrocious this run would be? That would be interesting, although I did find something incredibly... I, the thing I laughed a little bit was that I saw Mocha Potion 1 HP. I mean... I, find, I don't know I why I find don't say, I don't say go to full, so... I mean, okay, I do agree that my notes do say go to full. Uh, that's the wrong trash can, by the way, JLF. Just, 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 just so you know. It's the top one, and then the middle, and then the middle one. I you guess, have... could you do the middle one as well first, or am I stupid? I was just about to ask that. I don't know. Like, okay, you I... can do the middle one first, and then the one on top. I am not, I am thank that I'm not stupid. Some yeah. people do do the middle cat first, okay. Yeah, it's it, it, it's probably one of those, like, taking the route through Rocket HQ. Six of one, either way. Oh, we have some some people, some, someone doing a funny little, fun little poll, so here's a little, here's a little poll for, it'll tell you more of a question. Like, what, what stat do you, you people think is Imperatus and Silly a characteristic for? Impetuous and silly. Ooh. I'm gonna tell you right now, I have no idea because I do not look at st 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 at those uh, characteristics because with the exception of this game, they do not matter. Yeah, like, I still don't understand how natures map onto the personality traits in I general. I cannot pronounce that first word, I am very sorry. It's like, what, impetuous? Yeah, impetuous. Thank you. We will all get an F if I do not answer. Joke's on you, I've already got that on my driver's license. And honestly, I don't mind getting an F in this quiz. It's not important <laughs> to me. Anyway, uh, here's a little tip in this fight. You can Hydro Pump the Tangela if you accidentally misclick and don't get to Psychic. It is a range. Don't hydro pump the thing. Also, we missed burner CP. Yep. So too, uh, too busy talk, talk talking we, about we're, English. We're, we're talking about quizzes. We're talking about questions. You know what should be the next poll? Uh, how many turns do we think Mocha Jones is gonna get for Archer? Uh, Burner, that should don't, be the field poll. Burner, don't forget the. the, the uh, yeah, don't forget the water stone. You do need the water stone. There's the there island. There, okay. there we go. He just got lost, okay? It's fine. Yeah. Yeah, like, honestly, not that bad of a route through the route. But I'm. Wait, uh, can we get information on the star here? Or oh. no? I don't if... think we can get CP information from this menu. Yeah, Unless at the very least, we can get stats. Wait, maybe? Uh, no, you can't see CP here. That's unfortunate. Yeah. I wish you could, but like I said, CP doesn't really matter. We're about to see actual stats here. So if from what I can tell, 7 is bad, 8 is good. Oh, that is a much better star. Okay, this is an actual special attacking star, you. It's slow, yeah. but it hits hard. Yeah. And like... And I think I'd rather, with one exception, I think I'd rather take a slow star than a weak star. Yeah, because, like, the only time there's a concern about uh, speed is on Blaine, right? There is one other concern of speed, but I think you have to be the lowest speed imaginable, and that is Rival 5. Right, the Pidgeot. The Pidgeot. Yeah. So there is a chance that this star could be slower than the Pidgeot, and if the Pidgeot chooses to uh, Shand attack... Ah, uh, <laughs> oh boy. Yep. Well, if it sand attacks the star, the, the, the yeah, shand attack, not not sand attack. 
You know what? I'm just going to be adding, anytime there's an S word, then I'm just going to be adding an extra H in it, because why not? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that is a 116 uh, speed on the Starmie. So that is going to be outsped by the Rabidash. Yeah. Do you know what I want to see one day, but we haven't seen it yet? In either race or PB? Mm -hmm. I want to see someone PB or race or win a race with a sh with a shiny start you and start me. Oh. oh, that would be sick. I don't think there's a single one of with a. Sh I've said that if I get a shiny star me or star or sh yeah star shiny star you uh, and I PB with that, I am never running the game ever again. Legit. That's it. That's that's the PB. In fact, even if it's slower than my PB, I'm gonna take down my PB and put that as the PB, even though it's not. <laughs> like, how much time would a shiny star lose over the course of the run? I'm pretty sure it will lose a lot of time because yeah, uh, I, I, not I, in nine where the shiny sparkle just happens almost immediately when you send out a Pokemon. This is. You send out the Pokemon, it then takes like two to three seconds to sparkle, and then that's it. Also, the the question to that poll, the answer to that, well, actually, most people voted speed, but I don't think that's actually the correct answer. So, Sad, uh, I don't know who put the poll, but whoever did, uh, please tell me, well, to, please tell the class what the correct answer is. As we get into uh, what I like to call Mocha Jones' worst nightmare. All right. Uh,. And we get them up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Mocha, for the copy pasta. And that's actually, I think, a new one for for this tournament. Hey, you know, if there's one thing I know about this community, well, it's that we Phoenix. love our copy pasta. Well, it's Phoenix. It's Phoenix's. Uh, Phoenix, I salute you and your like copy pasta months. powers. But to be fair. Uh, I think Mocha Jones deserves to, to take some of the credit because, let's face it, the first ever Archer we've ever seen well, for Mocha Jones is absolutely horrific. Oh, All no. right. Okay, we're fine. No para. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this is way better than the, the first one. This is fine. You just have to uh, heal and hope. Wait, actually, wait, yeah, Cuba went for focus energy, or did it miss Boomerang? If it went for focus energy, that's good. Mm -hmm. Because Let's then it happens here. Time. Please, boom. Boom! Self-destruct failed, which is either a good or bad. Because if it sucker punch stop, okay, wait, is it? You know what? This is the fastest four-turn fight you can get. So we'll mm -hmm. take note. Because now you don't have to worry about sucker punch animation and all that jazz. So yeah, this is this is absolutely the second best Archer two fight you could possibly have. Yep. Obviously the best being three turn, but well, 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 well yeah. but that's that's rare in of itself. It's like three turn, yes, let's go. Four turn, you know what? We'll take it. Five turn, eh? Six turn. Seven turn, at that point, I'm just going for a PB in the other direction. That's why uh, I should have said more specifically six plus turn. But yeah, Mocha Jones getting pretty much a fantastic fight. Uh, as JLF is also going to be heading to that fight, and we're hoping for, every for that fight to also be great. Also, Headstrong, thank you for the raid as we're heading into essentially the end game for well the third the third the, the third third of the game yeah. effectively our three yes oh I, well, I had no idea wait. those were raspberries wait there's raspberries and is it a hidden item or is it a pokeball item it's the pokeball item behind the ladder right those here by ten those are raspberries now uh, okay I'm not yeah. expecting. There you is a what? pack of five silver razes. JLF, <laughs> pausing, taking a moment to consider whether or not he actually wants to go fight Archer. Nah, he accidentally just pressed. Understandable. <laughs> yeah, it's also the fact that, you know, menuing this game is 
annoying. Oh yeah. Like having to just use a singular Joy-Con control stick to do all your menuing uh, is not great. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, but you just send in anything. It does not matter. By the way. Wait, Tentacle only has three. Did I just see Tentacle only has three moves at this point? That's. Huh. Wait. Am I? Uh, uh, I, I mean, wait. Hold on. First off, JLF is doing Archer. Let's see what happens. No, it has four. I just didn't see the normal move. Mm. All right, Thunderbolt. We got Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt. Psychic. Okay, so we're, we're seeing the same opening as Mocha. So let's see what does this Cubone choose to do. Does hit the Boomerang. I actually will think that it's a bad thing that Electro dies here, but I think it's a good thing that it's low HP. That, that I've never, I mean, that would be an interesting, what hap What do you do if uh, Thunderbolt and then Cubo kills the Electrode? That would be interesting. Yep. But, but see the boomerang? Hit, does it kill? All right, yes. that's again, the second best fight, two in a row, two for two. Yeah. Uh, JLF, a little bit behind in the foot race, uh, down a couple of Evos so far. Yeah, he still has, uh, the Tentacruel, well, wait, no, the Grimer and the Tentacruel that needs to be still obtained. So he is actually more behind Mocha than what may be perceived here, because insert copy past a reference here, but aside from that, you know. Interesting. We withdrawing the. Ah, I guess you. I guess yeah. I guess Burda does not need that coughing to evolve, because you just need Lapras and and uh, and actually he he uh, what yeah he just needs Lapras. Uh, why is it forty eight? Oh. Um... Ah, no, I don't want. Uh huh. He he has fifty one planned. So he actually can be like uh, Mocha, skipping either the Porygon or the Lapras as well. This is a very interesting. This is a very strange race in terms of like, especially the end game with their catch counts. Yeah. Like, this is yet another case of someone being able to skip Porygon or Lapras. Yeah, I do think Burner needs to go for Lapras because he needs to pick up the candy unless he grabs the mansion candy here. Well. Yeah, Mo Eve. Oh, uh, wait, no, well, as you just say, I think Burna is going to be skipping Lapras. I think. Hi, Ditto. Is Ditto like a real. I think Ditto's like a really bad catch for us. I remember. I just never go for it because I don't, I don't have to, but I think if I remember yeah. Ditto, like, awful. I have never been desperate enough to even think about it. I'd been once, but I had like one Ultra Ball left, and I was like, oh, yeah, this one's probably dead, isn't it? Yeah. And turns out, it has. Actually, wh why are we even guessing? Uh, why are you even guessing? We have a command. I just need to know what its level is. Yeah, what is the lo usual level for the mansion? Uh, actually, we can find out. Uh, also, I'm pretty sure you have to add like the R for Raz, I think, in the thing. I don't know where you add the R. Uh, you add the SR at the very end for Silver Res. And then I just need to know the level, and that's it. I think we actually we can tell what the level is based on JLF evolving one more level. Mm -hmm. On something. Tentacle 44, so it's four, Wait, that's Tentacle 45. Driver 46, so it's 45. And that is... I put something wrong. Oh, it's other way round on the last two, so it's U U S R E. Ah, okay, hold on, let me just copy that. So it's U U S R then E. Yep. Uh, it can be Lord. Well, this is the worst case scenario. Eighty-one point four three. Eighty-four point one three. That's way better than I thought. But I guess is you have to get it as an excellent, and you have to use double ultra, and you have to use, uh, yeah. It's not great. Yeah. Not, not as terrible as I thought, but not great. Yeah, better than expected is not the same as good. 
No. And just out of curiosity. I guess I ran out. I guess I ran out of the ball usage. That's fine. I was gonna check what the great ball, what ultra great. Oh is no, like. you, you you did exclamation point ditto as opposed to exclamation point catch rate ditto. Oh right, that's what that's what happened. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, someone else did it. Well, actually, someone did magma, but you know what? It's fine. We don't yep. need to worry about ditto. In fact, we don't need to worry about catches. We're in Sabrina now. Well, at yeah. least Mocha's in Sabrina. JLF is a bit behind with Giovanni, but Giovanni's a simple fight. You just X special, you skull three times, you win the game. Well, you win the and fight. Murder's oh, a yeah. little further back on Blaine, but still done with catches. Yeah. Catches are done. And yes, Mocha Jones does have a Pokemon that is level 45. I actually didn't see yet. So the last foot Pokemon that Mocha has is the Lapras. My guess is that there's a good chance that Mocha goes for uh Lapras strats or Lapras strats or whatever how people pronounce Lapras nowadays. Uh fish strats. Are we really having this argument? Are we really gonna have this argument of whether or not Lapras is a <laughs> Water type strats. Okay, yeah. Technically, we cut we classify water types as a fish, so technically Lapras will count as a fish. Well, te technically, fish is a uh, linguistic term, not a scientific one. There is no scientific definition of fish. Yeah, I mean, uh, ooh, okay, that, that was. That was <laughs> I do appreciate the the trainer pass taking us away from that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mocha. <laughs> that, was I was like, no, I, I would not have the confidence, personally. I guess that's what you need, the conf you need that confidence if you want to get yourself like PBs or world records, I guess. Yep. Um, Burner uh, finished burning up Blaine. But I'm... I mean... You probably should have a you probably should have a burn heal or something. I think it's the joke or something. Anyway, uh this fight. Uh pretty simple fight for Mocha. It's you X special if you see light screen turn one, which is I well technically the ideal is no light screen, but Ah, that's the unfortunate side, which is light screen turn two. Yeah, Super Sabrina likes to troll. You know, you see no light screen turn one, you get really excited, and then she's like <laughs> You thought. Yeah. So healing makes sense. Uh, I mean, it, this fight could be worse. I had a much worse fight the other day, which was, uh, you know, still the normal fight, but I got what I like to call the 1% chance. Well, actually, is it 1%? Yeah, the 1% chance of happening, which is psychic special defense drop, psychic special defense drop, dead. I've missed the 2HKO on Mr. Mime. Yeah. No, I just got, I got, yeah, I just got, but I got psychic t defense dropped twice, which is, Jeez. I think, dumber. Yeah. Like, I learned in my practice for the tournament that if your star's special attack is bad enough, that Mr. Mime can be arranged. No, miss, yeah, that Mr. Mime with light screen is arranged sometimes. Yeah. Like, a lot of the time, you actually don't mind seeing the burn on Mr. Mime, because if you see the burn on Mr. Mime, it's like, you, you know you got it next time. <laughs> next turn. Yep. I think that's uh, one six, oh, 116 special attack? Did I see that right? On level 40, 48? Ugh. Yep. So the fact that Mocha got the, the, the two hit on the Mr. Mime is very good. I also didn't see the items bought for Mocha, so I don't know if he actually bought X Special Defenses or not. I don't think you're going for those strats, but you know what? It'll be funny to see if he does. Uh, uh, we do see JLF not buying the X Special Defenses. So, yeah, that, that makes so a lot that, of sense. That tells me that we are doing 2P uh, Elite 4. At least specifically yep. 2P Lance and 2P... Uh, b -b 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 uh, to be champ, or I like to call it rival six. Uh, looks like yes, Mocha did shop. I do see the X special defenses. So, Mocha can go for One Piece strats. Should they? Uh, I would like to make the argument of no, your special attack is garbage, but you know what? Yeah, you do you. 
Yeah, like... Uh, also, you you're ahead. Just, at this point, comfortably. I think if you do 2 feet stretch for the rest of the game, I think you're fine. Personally. And I think Mocha's far enough ahead of PB right now that going for 2C strats... Uh, and it could be going for sub 310, but like I said, I just do not think that with your special attack, you could go for any of the One Piece threats. Remember, just as a FYI, he is 119 special attack at level 49. Yep. He's and not like, even 120. Yeah, like, this would be a really solid run to establish a baseline, and then if you get another run like this with a slightly better star, you go for it. I mean, I don't think you can get stars. Well, I mean, I think you can get stars worse than this, but I don't think you can get... Statistically, it's unlikely you're going to get a star worse than this. So if this actually happens your PB, it's like, yeah, you're going to have to go for the early game if it was very good, but at least you'll let you know that in the late game you have time save, which is at the very least... I don't know what's better, like, having... A lot of time save in the early game, but not much time save in the late game or the other way around. I think some runners prefer having a lot of time save in the early game, but not late game, because you could at the very least see your minus, and then you go, you'll start losing that time, instead of the other way around where you have to see your plus, because people don't like seeing red and like seeing green. Yeah. But also, not choosing to uh, heal the poison is a choice. Not a choice yeah. that I would do, but it is a choice. Yeah. Counterpoint, though, you know, if you know you've got that time save coming, you do get the dopamine hit of just watching all of that uh, time loss bl bleed away in the other direction. That is true. As we do see the punishment of not healing the poison from open your side. And actually, would it actually did get punished for choosing not to heal the poison twice, not because of the poison animation, but also the fact that Muck went for Protect, so... You could have saved a lot of time, and now you absolutely have to heal after this one. Yep. Yeah, technically, if you get poisoned by Caden, it is somewhat safer just to spam Psychic. Because if Mark goes for Minimize, <laughs> uh, yeah. you're going to have a fun time. It's the only other Pokemon in the game we have to deal with Minimize shenanigans. But aside from that, but it's like... Do you really want to take the time loss from poison? I mean, Here's the part you absolutely want to heal poison. But. Yeah. The important part is Mocha's through. We're on Koga. No one's getting kicked by Koga today. Thank God for that. Oh, wait. We, we haven't got there yet for two of our runners. Ideally, they are at 50, but they could have I done trust that. their trackers. And look, we had one case last race where someone didn't get hit, someone got kicked by Koga. It was actually Pokey Guy who got kicked by Koga and won a bounty because of it. Oh jeez. Imagine winning money by accidentally not playing the wrong by accidentally playing the game wrong. I mean you don't even know if there are actually any bounties for this tournament. You know. I can I can imagine it. I don't think it would ever happen. I think I just play the game well wrong and lose races, but Oh, there's a ditch bill one. So if you want money, uh, ditch bill. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder if the faint from last year is still a bounty. You know, the dreaded faint from... Uh, from... That apparently exists, but in this race tournament, we have not seen it, so... Yeah. Until good we old, see it in the race tournament, it's not real. Yeah, good old Bruno's Hitmonlee apparently is supposed to have faint. No, it oh, does have That's a 18 special attack for JLF. Okay, I, I didn't realize it could go worse. <laughs> apparently it can go worse. And that was with plus one go power in special attack. Oh my, I think JLF might just be... Uh, no good special attack. So, you know, that's fun. So yeah, I don't- I think, you know, with that information, I think Mocha is, you know, somewhat safe. But I do actually want to talk a little bit about, you know, money, because there is actually a prize pool for this- for- for this tournament. Uh, 
There, the prize pool is currently hit at city at five hundred dollars and sixty nine cents. Nice. It used to be uh, four hundred and twenty dollars, but someone changed that. So. Yeah. But you know that's fine. So. And currently, right now, whoever the distribution is currently right now, first place 50%, second place 30%, third place 10%, so first... So, that is the price payout. So the first place would get $250.34, second place would get $150.20, and third place will get $50.06. If you want to change, you can contribute to the price pool yourself. So if you want more people to... So if you want the top runners to get more money, go ahead and do that. And of course, later on, we are going to be talking about, you know, more races that's going to happen. This is, of course, even though this might sound like this is round two, race... Round three, race nine, this is not the second to last race of the tournament. Of this round, I mean. We still have... One, two, three, four, five more races after this. We'll yeah. go over more about the... We'll go about over the next three uh, in a bit, including one that's at a very funny time. Um, Chad is saying modest 102 happiness level 49 zero IV zero AP uh, is 117 special attack. So yeah, maybe I m missed where the no, AV went. No, that means JLF actually has the worst. Oh, that's on blue. That's level 47. Wait, no, wait, that's level 49. No, that is um, that is actually the. That means if that is the worst special attack. That means JLF actually has no good special attack. Yep. Because he's 118, but that but we saw the 1 AV go to special attack. That literally means he has zero. Holy sh Holy moly. This is well, I, well, JLF gets the award for currently the worst start in the entire tournament. I, there is no bounty for that, sadly. Anyway, Burner is about to go to the is approaching also the worst fight. So we've seen the exact same fight for Mocha and JLF. Can we please make this three for three? Or, you know, if, if, if the game wants to be, you know, a little spicy, mix it up a little bit. Uh, give her the three. Give her the three turn fight. He deserves any it. Other, any other point, I would. I would say please mix it up because we want to see diversity. Arch is not one of them. Look, if if the game wants to mix it up, fine. In which case, yes. But yeah. aside from that, yeah. no. Yeah, like any three or four turn fight is acceptable. Anything else, and I'm going to have some words for the game. Oh no, we got some worse statistics for JLF. But apparently, to have 118 with an AV that is maximum two IV special attack. Oh jeez. So we probably know what the strats are gonna be for both of our both of both of our runners in the lead, which is gonna be uh play it safe. Do not do stupid stuff because you cannot do it. There's Thunderbolt. Wait, is that Thunderbolt? No protect psychic? Oh that's even better. Okay. Then wait. No, wait, yeah, that's the same, the same thing. Yeah, wait, this is, this is just gonna be the same fight again, isn't it? <laughs> it would be funny. It would be really funny if this is the exact same fight. Okay, heal. we heal. We yeah, get okay, a sucker punch. Right we get self-destruct. Didn't fail, but he's attacking. Wait. Hold. 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 It's the same fight! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 it's literally the same fight! fight three times the only difference is the only difference is omoka the cubo miss boomerang jlf had the standard fight and burner had uh the sucker punch on cubo that's literally it uh you know we take that and run what is this? So we have what? Ch four chances and the same three archer fights. Sorry, five chances. Four of which from the same one runner. Wild. 
Also, JLF does not have the X defend, so I assume this is going to be a 2C Giovanni as well. Yeah. Uh, well, technically, Pikachu is normally supposed to have it, but the only reason why JLF does not have the X defend is because he actually bought Burn Heals instead of the X defend in the first shot in the very first shot of the game. Normally, you ah. do not buy Burn Heals with the Pika because. Typically, I have the uh, re rationale of if you get scold, you're die. You're gonna die anyway. Yep. But, but it is technically an option if you think that your Pikachu is going to survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I do not think JLF is going to stop in the Viridian Mart to buy X Defend. No. He's just gonna take the two because he's gonna play it safe and just do. Uh, two piece strats, which is respectable. I think all of I think we're gonna just be seeing safe strats for all of our runners. Actually, I just realized something. Uh, because I just I think I real I think Mocha actually still has the Lapras in the party, and he's just gonna be like, you know what? I'm just gonna keep the Lapras until I don't need it. I think, if I'm not mistaken. Mocha's got four. No, never mind. No, I'm stupid. I'm stupid. Never mind. Forget what I said. Forget what I said. Forget what I said. I haven't just embarrassed myself in front of tape. The battle of front of like 50 ish people on, t on the channel. Oh, no, that's Giovanni. I'm silly. Yeah. No, I was saying that I thought he had Lapras in his party, but it's like, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Also, Rapidash being knocked out here is great because we do not need... Rapidash doesn't need to do anything else. The only yep. downside of doing the fight this way is you do have the menu. Typically in this fight, even if... I'd still probably just take the do the 1P if you're Pikachu, if, assuming you bought the X Defend, because, like, you have the X Defend. You may as well use it. At least IMO. Yep. Yeah. So that's like the one downside of doing the one piece of the two piece strat in this fight. Unless Rapidash lives. If Rapidash lives, the only upside is you can hyper potion the Stami and hi and also heal the Rapidash. Yeah. And like if but... you're doing the one C strategy here, you usually have to heal up the Stami as well. It depends. Because because, let's face it, I don't get lucky on Giovanni 1C fights. It does de It does depend. Also, apparently we have a confirmation that apparently Mocha has three special attack IVs. Oh, three! Oh, oh. Ah, ah. Uh, I see we're on the same brain cell today. Yep. Uh, it's, it's like any time I, I do like any Sesame Street references, like I just cannot think of, I just always think of like a run that had been in a marathon where one person did just an Elmo voice the entire time and it was just funny as hell. Well, that sounds amazing. I mean, if you uh, want, I, I can, I can send, I can send, I can send you that, I can send you that run. It's actually, it, the game was Elmo's typing adventure, if you wanted to know. No, that checks out. I am unsurprised by the fact that it was an elbow game. Uh, looks like JLF got the Hydro Pump on uh, the Nitto King here. Wait, did he go once? He... Oh, yeah. That, that, is that not a range with, like, the worst special attack in the world? No idea! <laughs> I might not be, but I think it, it I think it might have been, like, a range with the worst, but I think maybe, maybe Hydro Pump might have been there, and yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it, it apparently is a range, oh, like a but... Range. But yeah. he got it, but you know what, it's fine. I guess JLF is trying to catch up, but it's like... Mocha kinda ha- I mean, I guess technically Caroline is like, what, the Great Decider or something? So... Yeah. We'll, maybe we'll, we'll there is a chance that JLF could actually catch up if, uh, Caroline is being like... <laughs> no. But... Yeah, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Um, I also have to imagine... Uh, runner is going for safety saves. Oh, JLF did not know it was a rage. Well, well I think hey, it's it Hold on, man. I, I'm getting my notes up. Sometimes you just have to full send, you know. I've written, I've written the... I should have written the ranges down. Hold on, where is it? Where is it? Giovanni 2. Well, wait, not Giovanni. Or just before Giovanni 3. Uh, where's the range? Ace Trainer Samuel Risky, Neo King Hydro Pump. If you are 116 or 117 special attack, that is a 12 and 16. 
And if you are 118, it is a 13 and 16. It is only guaranteed at 122. So yes, that is a range. Get out. It like is I've been saying on screen recently, the all you have to do is simply hit your ranges. Oh, he did two things. He not only hit his ranges, he hit a pump. A pump range. A yeah, a pump range, which is like really interesting. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I do not know about pace times, and also depending on what strat you do, you don't have. But you know, this will be pretty hype if Mocha can get his uh, as his name says, sub ten. That is true. Anyone who does know what, I guess the only thing that we could see is if we could, is like all of our runners do have splits, and if they have a BPT on their splits. We could technically get what their best possible time is. But we do have... So I think people are more interested to see what Mocha's BPT is. Yep. Let me see what I can dig up. Because at least for all three of our runners... Uh, actually, all three of our runners, when they have their recordings, uh, they do have their splits on the grey part of their setup for... The OBS stream, so we'll see. I think like BBT is a little bit more of a tiling method that I like to see. But yeah, JLF currently now has a 3.15.10 best possible time. Obviously, with gold splits, that can change. So do keep that in mind. It could also be slower as well, depending on, again, strats that people are using. Mm -hmm. So again, do keep all this information in mind. As you see Mocha immediately summon the second controller. No hesitation whatsoever. Mm -hmm. But I am definitely more interested to see Mocha's, uh, assuming that he does use BPT. For those who don't so... know, BPT is best possible time. Live split that can calculate that, but it is, of course, based on your gold splits. And depending on what strategies you use, uh, some splits might be uh, unbeatable in terms of a gold. Yep. Uh, so it looks like we don't have best possible time for Mocha, but current pace is listed as a 314. Interesting. Uh, I guess you could have a, um, yeah, I guess current pace is also like another thing that you could have in your life split layout. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is I, also a range. Either way, you know, if the, you know, if things go well for Mocha, this is going to be a huge PB. And that's what matters. You want to know something funny? I don't. Th I didn't check Mocha Jones' special attack. I don't think plus four scold is a guarantee on the Kangas cards. The fact that he hit plus two hydro is actually kind of funny. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, but again, we don't know how confident these runners are in terms of their, you know their skips, and also, you know, also the knowledge of the fact that that trader will not see you if you're very far down. If he looks down and you're very at the very bottom down, he does not see you. Yeah, and for Mocha, you know, the 314 is using his current split, assuming he ties his current splits for the rest of the run, if, you know... Our current pace is a bit different. Ex ex exactly. I'm, what, what I'm saying is Mocha is using current pace rather than best possible time. Yeah. On a split layout, yeah. But there's yeah. like a lot of different things that people have. People have like average, like sometimes there's like some things I've, that I've seen on his thing. But like I said, current pace kind of does math to figure out kind of like an average ish of like how many times you've done this run to this point and like using that to justify what kind of pace you have in. There's some funky math that... Current, actually, no, I'm just going to quickly Google what this current what is what's current pace on lights, but... That way I'm not actually spreading this information. Right. Uh, that's not information I need to see. 
Right. Uh, hold on. We're almost there. Reset chance, place, time attack, stamina components, run prediction. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, just uh, okay, hop, there is a hop, one. Hop, yeah. Hop, j j just hop into the tech channel. Let, let me know what uh, stream key head Bob is is streaming on, and I'll get right on that. <laughs> Wait, what's the what's the thing that he said? What is it? It's uh what uh current pace, I think it is yeah. that he said. Yeah, but Mocha's current pace is a one four is a three fourteen. Yeah, tells you current pace in a theoretical race against every period previous pace in current history. Okay. Oh, Mocha's pub was a 50-50 range on the Kangas card. Right, so let's see if he gets to skip. Nice. nice! It's not the hardest skip in the game, but it is the most stressful. Yep. Alright. And now, with this, the actual decider of this run, Caroline. Leap 4, if, if they're playing safe, doesn't matter. It's Caroline. Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact that this Hydra Pop is probably not going to get the range. It's probably going to not get a range. So, let's see. Hydra Pop misses and gets put to sleep. Oof. Very a great start. Also, that's like did some damage. Ice Beam does not freeze. So we can try again. Misses again. Yes. No, okay. Oh, no, Wait, no, hold no. on. This pipe, this pipe, this pipe, uh, this pipe had give uh, JLF a chance. Hold on. Ice Beam. Honestly, Ice Beam Freeze is kind of like a somewhat of a godsend. Yeah, okay. Hydro Pump. Hit the pump, miss the range. So it's fine. You just pound the ball here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're through. And apparently, Burner Star is apparently just a god. 134 special attack at level 49. Jeez. Let's go, Burner. That could hit a Dragonite range. And they're not even high leveled yet. Yep. Right, hold on. Edit layout. Infamous. Yeah, so we got JLF on the Hypno, as Mocha has finished up Caroline. Ah, I get it. So, yeah, so what we're seeing for Mocha is, well, I've just double checked on my own life split, is that there is a component called Current Pace. Well, mm -hmm. well it's actually called something else on life split, which is actually called, if I just quickly get the information, it is called Run Prediction, and based on what mm -hmm. parameters you put, what parameters it defaults the current pace which kind of gives you like an average of kind of like based on what you've done before what your pace is like heading into the elite four heading into like the end of the game doesn't matter which one you do you can change that to either you know current pace based on the current current uh based on the run that you're doing right now or based on it's actually based on personal best but you can do it against best pace and you can do it against uh, worst segments. Oh, I just realized. So I just realized something new. You could add a worst possible time to your life split. Yep. It is. You can do some things in life split. I did not realize that worst possible time is a thing that you could put. Oh, yeah. I um, knew the... worst was a comparison. I didn't realize you could have worst po. I bet you could also have. Yeah. The, there's <laughs> also a, like. Uh way that you could have it recompute your splits so that your difference between your gold split and your PB split for a given run are like all those time differences are smoothed out. Yeah. I found some new components that I found recently mm -hmm. called which is uh two that I might start to get at it is something called reset chance. The chance that you're gonna reset on that split. Yeah. And 
Uh, JLF gets uh, lets a skip. Very straightforwardly, Burner is about to fight Koga as Mocha is on good old Dawson. Cleaning up the Blastoise. Gotta be sub three out of Rock Tunnel. Yeah. Because I believe if you're doing 2C strats, you do not need to pick up the full restore. You don't? If especially if you're doing well, actually it depends on which two three chests you're doing. If you're just doing Lance and um, Lance and Champ or Rival Six, uh, you do not need the full restore. But if you're doing one P Agatha, you do. Hmm. Right. And remember, Rapidash cannot do Rapidash cannot do um, two P Agatha because it is neither a fish, a water type, or a bird, a flying type. This is mainly because you want to manipulate the AI to make sure it sends out the right thing, and uh, if you're using Rapidash as your 2P partner, it could send out a Gengar a bit earlier than you would like it to. And if that happens, your Starmie's dead. Yep. So, actually, I didn't, I don't, I didn't remember what the HP stat of Starmie is. So, yeah, Tep, if uh, your HP is actually high enough, and something that I might actually consider doing for race strats in the future, is actually just going into this fight with Rapidash, depending on how much HP your Starmie has, and then the fight afterwards heal, but that depends on a lot of scenarios. Mm -hmm. That way, yeah. depending on your opponent, if you see them going for 1P or 2P, you can then adjust. Mm -hmm. But... Here we yeah. are seeing that Mocha did bring out the Lapras and put back in the Rapidash. Yep. So uh, we are going to be seeing a uh, Lapras strats. But I think, uh, I think Mocha up. is setting up to plus six here 100% of the time. Oh no, you 100% are. It's like you would net like plus four is a meme. No, plus four is cope here. Yeah, like with a star this bad. Yeah, there there is no way. Um, if you, uh, Burner might be able to get away with plus four star. No, Burner um, can get away with plus four easily. In fact, Burner's special attack is so good, I think he could get to plus four and still scold the chicks. That's how good it is. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, at this point, uh, Mocha is all set up. Lorelei is going to be uh, very yeah. straightforward. And with um, Lapras. Plus four is actually like like this like Lapras just makes the Elite Four go from like kinda scary to kinda free. The only thing I Yeah. Yeah, I think uh your HP is good enough if you even if you see Earthquake from Bruno. Yeah, the only thing that I think Mocha has to do is because of how bad the special attack is, is you have to still psychic one of the Gengars even at plus four. You can't go for Scold. And you can, and you have to go for Ice Shot on the second Gengar because, again, your special attack is just that bad. Wait, I have copied wait. and pasted the notes into my into my notes for last. You can so scald the Cloister. Uh, technically, Cloister like, does have very bad special defense, but I don't think. I mean, you can. I mean, Mocha did is the point. I think, that, I, think that's a miss, I think that's a missed input because you're trying to input up twice mm -hmm. from Hydro Pump to Thunderbolt and you can accidentally stall. Yeah, but like it's the question of like, okay, that worked. Uh, you, what can is you, the challenge of it? <laughs> can you? Yes. Should you? No. Yeah, I, I, I guess my question is, you know, obviously it worked out in this case, somehow. Uh, but like, what is the threshold for it working? Clearly it works no matter what you, at plus six. Think, yeah, I think, yeah, plus six, it probably just kills. I mean, does it really matter? You 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 get a little bit of super effective text. You still have to move to Thunderbolt anyway. So it's like, I don't think the, the amount of time you save on super effect, in fact, you don't even save that time because scolding, the cloister gives you not very effective text, so that point's now mute. Yeah. So the answer is, you should never. Is the is the correct answer? Mm -hmm. 
It's just you accidentally scold the cloister because you tried to go up twice to fund the boat, and uh, you don't your, get punished. Your joy only accepted one up input, not two, before you pressed A. Mm -hmm. That's literally the only reason why scold happens. You can also accidentally psychic the the cloister, which probably kills, but yeah. You don't really want to use psychic because then you have to use skull and onyx. But I guess if you're doing lapras strats, you don't really mind psychicking the cloister. Because yeah, you, you could you're, almost on some of the Pokemon, but it's like... Yeah, though your ether usage does, timing does get a little weird. Not necessarily, because you do scold the final thing. Hmm. Well, and it's like, you typically want to scold on the final... Actually, wait, no, you can't scold on the Gengar because... Well, you can't scold with the Gengar, it's just you have to scold plus Ice Shard. It, 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 it's... I mean, as long as you ether before... Well, actually, it's technically a Max Elixir for, for Mocha, so you don't have to worry. Or is it Max Eva? One of the two. Okay, But that so... point, it doesn't matter. It's just yeah. Pikachu has the ether. Mm -hmm. Which, I did also see GLF do pick up... Just did pick up the Max Elixir anyway, so... Yeah, ether is the scariest thing to use in Pikachu. Because if you eat for the wrong move, your run's dead. Your run just dies. Burner, unfortunately, getting trolled by the moving platform uh, over there in Giovanni's gym. Yeah. We're not seeing any strats like last today where it's like one person decided to go for 1P, skips the full restore, and basically you can do that for Agatha. It's just that you are in a hyper potion loop until the game says you know what we're giving you the power of love hmm. so that is an option and i think etiquette did go for it in the last race that we saw but and didn't get like the optimal had to hyper potion like one more time but you know did get the power of love after the third turn so at least you know not the end of the world hmm. But that is technically a sh that is a risky strap because you are absolutely reliant on power of love to bail you out, and if it just doesn't bail you out, then you are you are you are stuck in a loop until you run out of hyper potions and the run is dead. Yep. Should you go for it? Unless you really need that time save. Uh, probably not. Yeah. So yep. Oh, I guess you could also go for like plus six here as well. So if you have really bad special attack, you can just go for uh, plus six. Oh yeah, you know you go for plus six. Wait, no, you go X special attack, X speed, X special attack. Yeah, sorry, you go to plus four. Never mind. I I'm not too familiar with Lapras Strats. I'm only starting to like learn it now because of the run, but you know. But because of the you know this tournament and many people are using Lapras Strats, but yeah. So. Typically, if you are using Lapras Strats, the, turn, the, the fight for Agatha is you Psychic X Special turn 1, Psychic X Speed turn 2, Psychic X Special Attack, or Scold if your Special Attack is at least 127. Golbat, you either Thunderbolt or Scold if your Special Attack is 135. And then for Gengar, you Scold Ice Shard if at 126, or Scold Ether if at 127. Mm-hmm. Like, at this point, you're not trying to go for ranges, you're just trying to play it extremely safe. And you do need... I mean, technically, you don't need 10 Psychics for the rest of us, for both Lance and Champion. You tend... Technically, if you choose to Thunderbolt the sum of the Pokémon, you can actually get away with less Psychics, but... You know, that's fine. So we are seeing the more traditional 2P strat for uh, Mocha, where you turn one, you... you set up, uh, I believe it's a or X -speed. X special X speed X speed, turn one, and then you summon it. I don't think that's actually correct for Lapras strats. If I'm not mistaken, you want the Lapras to take a hit from the Seedra. That way, the likelihood of Pidgeot going for air slash plus quick attack on the Lapras is more likely. I might be wrong on that. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to take a look. Um... I also wouldn't be surprised if, you know, this is a slightly... Th th these are the the strats that were developed I might, last year, I so might I don't know if there's new, like, developments in the technology. Okay, so, okay. so the notes that I've copied from are the Pikachu notes, because 
No, duh, I'm, I'm running Pikachu. I mean, Eevee might be a bit different. Yeah. But yeah, uh, 53, 132 special attack. So, just out of, just out of funsies, uh, you wonder the range of 132 special attack on, on Dragonite? Oh, please. 132 special attack, Dragonite, is... Where is it? 11 and 16 is actually better than I thought it was. Oh, huh. Apparently, the worst range that has been written here is 127 by Lance. If you're 127 on Lance, that, that, if you want, that's a coin flip. Oof. So I guess your odds of killing Dragonite is, cannot be less than, the, than a coin flip. But thankfully, thanks to Lapras knowing Ice Shard, yeah, it's a priority move that can just deal with a, with a Dragon, can chip for Dragonite, and then the Psychic Cat. Or if you want to do it the other way around, there is actually a different strat, the slightly different strat depending on how high a special attack is you could actually go for psychic body slam oh. but won't, won't the lapras be slower lapras will be slower yes but like it means that if you have like a likelihood range to kill the dragonite and you want to go risk it anyway or if you know your your psychic is going to knock out the lapras anyway uh you can just um you could just uh, use Body Slam instead and not have to see the Ice Shot animation, but obviously our uh, special attacks for both of our runners are uh, pathetically bad. To put it guys. spicy. Anyway, Mocha is now on Champ. Uh, this fight can be a bit scary depending on what Pidgeot decides to... Depending on what funky Pidgeot stuff... Uh, funky stuff Pidgeot decides to do, that's what I'm trying to say. Oh, no, no, I'm here for funky Pidgeot stuff. Like, not happening in our runners, but just the turn of phrase. Oh, I guess I should say more funky Jesus bird stuff, but to be more accurate. But, yes. Did you know uh, that was a decade ago? I know. <laughs> I just got told that was a decade ago. I mean, it makes sense. It's Gen 6. Gen 6. Twenty fourteen was when X and Y. Twenty thirteen actually it was when X and y, y released. So, oh, but oh, ah, that's what I mean by funky Pidgeot stuff. Yep. Oof. All right. Wait. I mean, this is this should be fine. But... No! 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 I saw no. Oh, Mocha. You're supposed to heal. Oh, my heal heart. <laughs> Quick attack rage! Wait, hold on. This this might be a this might be a throw. Like I saw red health. It's like you're gonna heal, right? You're gonna heal, right? I I I, 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 I saw Mocha go for it. I'm like, okay, okay, this could be interesting. Uh, you know, maybe going for uh, maybe trying to get lucky here. No, it's like no, you're dead to quick attack always. That's not that's okay. not even like a joke, but right? that's like you're dead to quick attack there. Always. Mocha, it's like you're 18. He did have the safety save, which is good. I, I mean he if he didn't save, then it would actually be JLF's right right will be JLF's ways to win. Yeah. Like, oh my heart. Just just an FYI, Pidgeot's quick attack does at with the best defense ever, 19. That was less than 19. Mm -hmm. So, no, that is a, uh, you should have known. Yeah, that was an unfortunate misplay. Um, Mocha is still technically ahead. Uh, but yes, I think if JLF, JLF, uh, Lapras if is JLF dead. Lapras dies, uh, and Mocha's does not. Uh, this could go either way. And also, any misclicks that any of our runners have. Yep. 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 Go. Yep. That's correct. Do you have to be? I mean, I guess you should probably be plus six just in case. I I know oh. Pikachu has to be plus six, but yeah, Eevee. Technically, don't have to be, but I would just be like, don't gamble it and just like, your special attack is awful. 
I would gamble it. I wouldn't even gamble it. I mean, I would. You have. You have to go for the X special if you're. Yeah. Yeah. Like. I guess plus six is not needed in EV. But do remember, this is the worst special attack. Uh, we've some of the worst special attacks we have seen. So, mm. I guess it also just means that you don't have to think about pressing the right button for Marowak. Yeah. If you're plus six, you can just spam Psychic and don't have to care. Yeah, it looks like uh, JLF is through the... Yeah, yeah unfortunately JLF uh, Lapras is alive, so... Assuming no other misplays, yeah. uh, this is Mocha Jones W. Yeah, a very good race from both runners. Um, Burner also doing an excellent job going into Carolyn's Kangaskhan. Uh, doing the safe two C strats. I do not blame Burner at all there. Yeah. Okay, so Mocha did just went for plus four and then just went for Skull, whereas Eevee, you do actually need a big plus six because one of the downsides of running Pikachu is you have to face a Jolteon, which not only has higher special attack, but also has higher special defense. And also higher speed, which is also a bit annoying. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, Mocha Thunder bolted the Solbo, which means it is a G G's for Mocha, which is looking to be like a three low three sixty for Mocha. Yep. Uh, I've got my finger on the timer. If you want to keep going ahead and commentating, I'll yeah. get the tech set up. Gonna get also is now on the Marowak and is just needs doing one more one more is now on the slow bow. All he needs to do is Thunderbolt the slow bro. What are you doing? No, not Hydro Pump. Thunderbolt. There we go. I mean, I don't think Hydro Pump kills, personally. I don't I don't know the damage count, but I don't think Hydro Pump at plus six kills a slow bro. Mm -hmm. uh, someone can someone can do the math on that. But yep, that is also JLF. Also, probably a high 316 or a low 317, assuming the timer on my screen is actually the correct timer. Actually, I can't do math at all. It's actually going to be a low 3 315 for Mocha because I do not know the time. And that is... According to what the layout says, is a 31556 to Mocha. G... G is as JLF is actually not that far behind. And Burner is on... Uh, <laughs> Juggler something. I actually forgot what his name is. I have no idea what I was thinking there. I mean... That, that that's how it goes sometimes you get caught up in the heat of the moment and you're like i just want to go for the knockout and you just you, you just completely whiff i've done that in more speed runs than i can count but yeah, so what, what's, uh, funny, what's funny is the last thing i thought was oh this is quick attack range thunderbolt like <laughs> no <laughs> I mean, didn't you think about, like, maybe Thund... Well, actually, I don't know if plus two Thunderbolt would have killed the Pidgeot. So, yeah, I think it was, like, you had to kind of, like, X special plus hype, Hyper Potion. But did you not think, like, for, like, ten seconds, like, red HP probably means I'm not killing the... Yeah, I mean... Dead, <laughs> dead to QA? That, that, was, that, was a, that was a decision, nonetheless. But, hey... Somehow I, I I did the thing and something happened and some yeah. something happened and here we are. Yeah, you were not thankfully you a you did save so thank God and b uh that yeah that did make the race slightly closer to for JLF to actually catching you up. If you did not save, you would actually have done. I would believe the biggest throw in the entirety of the Let's Go speedrunning races. Yeah, like, I, I I knew going into Agatha, I was just going to start saving, because Agatha mm -hmm. can be terrible, and I've experienced it. Luckily, I was still in 2C, but, but hey, somehow, somehow, it happened. Although, we do also need to think, say that, apparently, I think you currently have the world record of most amount of chances seen in one world. I saw one that. Run. I saw that. It's like, it was funny, like, I saw the one that was obviously down the basement, then another one spawned, then I hit one on my way out of the dude. It's like, and then I hit, 
and now I see the one that's right outside Snorlax. And like, come on, man. It's like, it's like, it's like you had four, and then there was like one other runner who got five, and it was like, it's like five chances in a single race. What we talk about that? being done with catches like before all this even at Star Star you. Yeah. Like, it's I don't wild. know how that happened. I mean, this is this this this, this the even at the lower. Like at the lower end of the of the pools, the races are just they just get wacky. I mean, at least hey, the your archer fight was at this time was actually pretty good compared to your first time. I mean, what could be worse than having to see a uh, rival's Raichu come out? What? When? During rival my, first, my first archer two fight. Oh yeah, yeah. That that that's a uh, that's that's bad. But now we have the funny thing where every single person had the exact same archer fight. Yeah, I saw that. And it was funny. <laughs> what? It's like when was a archer this nice to all three of our runners and just give every single one the exact same fight? It's actually stupid. It's like, yeah, it's good. Okay, Mocha gets the you know archer. Uh, you know, Thunderbolt, Kill Muck, Boomerang, Kill Radicate, you know, fast four turn fight. That's nice. Then JLF gets the fast four turn. It's like, okay, are we going to have three in a row? And then Burner gets to the Archer fight and it's like, he gets that fight. It's like, how? <laughs> this is, ha what, what kind of a cosmic rays hit all three of your switches to make that happen? Ah, uh, that, that 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 this this race is just funky. I, I, I'm just gonna say this right now. This race was absolute. Like the three of you not having any pink things to spawn in Mount Moon in Mount Moon, and then all of a sudden you just get like a barrage of different pink things spawning is like really funny. It's a it's like this 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 race. This this is this is something. I, I, I have to admit, this is like this. I, this I is going like, to be a race you know, for the history books. Yeah, this is a race of all time. I will say that much. Yeah. Anyway, I believe we have JLF in here as well. Yeah. I hate motion control. JLF, GG. You know what? I agree with you. Motion controls somewhat suck. Yeah, that was that's a, that was a moment. But yeah, you know, you almost had you you almost had uh, first pl first place coming in, but thanks to uh, uh, Mocha's misplay, almost costing him the entire thing. I think if I had reacted just a little bit slower, I might have. like if I had not reset as soon as I saw that health bar go to zero, I might have actually come in second. Oh, it was that close. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, no, if you didn't have... Uh, yeah, also, no, it's more the fact that you were ahead enough that it was fine, but it's like, if you didn't save the game, if you didn't save the game, then you would have thrown. Like, that was, like, the big thing. Like, you saving before champ was the reason why you didn't get second place and not, and not, and not first place. At least I believe that to be the case. I I, I could be completely wrong. So, so GLF, uh, how did how did you lock your star and the uh, and both of us having like no special attack? Because I had no special uh, attack either. I just I mean used to run range. So it was fine. I, I like that hydro pump hit that you did. And apparently, uh, on. On uh, Lorelei, you can scald the <laughs> the cloister. Yeah, I mean you can, but it's like it's mostly if you do a miss input, which is what I'm assuming happened. Yes, like yeah. I was going to I was going to up input because I was already on scald from the Jinx, and I just my up input got. Yeah, yeah, I I knew that was gonna happen. Speaking of. 
I, I did not check what this but 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 what uh burn what I think burn is but can actually do one piece strength the entirety because this special attack on like you had the most one of the atrocious stars in the entire thing but Burner has a god special attack from what I from what I've heard. I wasn't keeping track because the two of you are having a pretty close race, but I'm pretty sure this is like a plus four. And if I'm not mistaken, this is a plus four, a plus four version of the fight that not only is the Lapras guaranteed. I'm pretty certain you can just sculpt the jigs at the, uh, plus four. That's how good the special attack is. Yeah. Um. Hey, this Burner as well. Don't quote me on that, but I think it is. What do you think? I think this might be a PB page for Burner as well. Uh, I do not know. Oh, I just also realized that uh, Burner is also one level higher than normal. I think you use an extra red candy just to play it safe, which is, you know, a, absolutely a fair strat. Like, if your special attack is horrendously bad, being one level higher can fix some of your stuff. It does mean potential early turnaround, though, but it is something that you, you can consider. A burner going through the first, going through the first of many. Uh, well, I say first of many elite four members. There's only three more. <laughs> Yes, turns out the Elite Four has four traders that you have to face. And then there's a champion, so technically it's more of an Elite Five, but shush. What, what Disney like, like, movie is it? Numbers uh, are fake! What, what Disney movie is it? Uh, I think it's Turning Red, where there is the boy band that's called like Forever, but the parents are like, why are there five members if, there's, if it's called Forever or something? Like that? <laughs> uh. I have a reason for I have a reason for that. It's called be, it's because shut up. That's it. That's the reason. I I am still dealing with the numbers are fake. Ooh, okay, that's interesting. That that's an onyx crit earthquake. By the fact having two Pokemon in the party. Yeah. I mean still true. Loses, though at least. I mean yeah, technically the champion's not part of the Elite Four. Because well, they're just the final test, and it, it, it's a it's a complicated relationship. And yes, we do see the downside of using that extra rare candy. You do get early turnarounds on Bruno. Uh, typically, you want to get turnarounds by the time you get to uh, Agatha. However, there have been I've had this exactly once where I was able to skip or not have turnarounds at Agatha. I do not know how I did it, but I did it. I did not like, check that attack. I believe that, you know, no turnarounds on Agatha are either, like, either you are pumping or I I, I just don't believe you. <laughs> no, I had it. I think I, I think the Stami died in one of the fights. Mm. So that must have what happened. Also, I'm checking something real quick. I need to see what the special attack is on the Stami because I think it's something actually stupid. What, after the Hitmonchan do you get to level up? Because a 54, it's slightly different. No. Is it Machamp that gives you the level up? Yeah, it's Machamp that gives you the level up. Yeah, that makes much more sense. What? Level 53, 149. What is the star? It's 149 special attack. That's actually absurd. I... I have no words. Just to be clear, plus four psychic at 149? This is a... If this was like... If this was Pikachu, you could actually just go plus four. That's how oh, I kill the Jolteon. That's, that's how absurd the star is. Alright, turn one para. Yep, you X speed. That's the flow chart. So this fight is also another flow chart, depending if you're 1P. Depending on what happens. Alright. 
and you break through, so this is actually pretty good. You just psychic spam, you win the game. Yep. Actually, this special attack is so good, you could actually hydro pump a few things. I do not know what, because I do not have those notes down, but you can actually hydro pump a few things, because, again, this special attack is actually stupid. Although, I, I probably won't risk it. Yeah, like, I think you would hypothetically uh, pump almost everything. Because I know that uh, the two best uh, ranges for pump are the Golbat and this first Gengar. Yeah. And then it goes downhill from there. So yeah, uh, chat say you can hide your like everything. Well, at 50, probably... yeah, but that's because 50, that's because uh, for those who don't know, certain levels give you like a boost to stat, well, boost to how much damage you're doing because uh, math, because level is part of the damage formula, and it typically gives you a boost if you're like at 0, 3, 5, and 8 compared to the other levels. Hmm. So, technically, yeah, 52, yeah, 53 saying that you can hydro pump everything actually kind of makes some sense. But yeah, this is this is this is this if obviously I don't think Bernard's going for two P because he might not be uh ex well not going for one P because he might not be as experienced uh in doing one P or just isn't comfortable in doing one P and just probably just reading the beginner notes, which does not have one P, which, you know, makes sense. Yeah, fair. So he might just be doing two P the entirety of the rest of the Elite Four. Which, you know what? Makes sense. Yeah, like, at this point, you know, you're just going for a finish. Yeah. Like, in other rounds, you probably, like, if you still have a chance in the tournament, you might... If you're last place, you might want to go for everything. But at this point, yeah, the other runners have finished. You just want to finish yourself. And this will be, you know, a 340, which is, you know, very respectable time. Hmm. Especially, I don't know how how much experience Bona has in this in this stream. I've been one again, another one of the new runners who just loved it for this tournament, which you know, very you know. Oh, oh no, he's going for interesting. He is actually going for one P. It's just he has rapid at the body just in case something bad happens or something. Yeah. I don't know. I don't hate the full send here. So there's one. Is this in the beginner notes? It might be. Who knows? Two. That's a crit on a hydro pump, so thank god it's not a hyper beam. Please heal. Please heal. <laughs> Don't do a uh... mocha, please heal. And then use your third X dash on that. There we go. Now as long as okay, we're fine. Now you full set. Yeah, yeah, so Albie did actually make an interesting good point. If even 31 special attack IV is not enough to have a special attack burner has, you need some AV. So, but I also got lucky in the AV roulette in getting just the high special attack that he has right now. But yeah, this fight, uh, now he is full set. Like, you don't even have you don't even have the Thunderbolt. It's like, I don't even know if the beginner notes have ranges for psychics. But if Bernard uh, doesn't know, you can just psychic the entirety of this fight and be completely fine. Yep. Especially with Especially this with good. the special attack that he has. People would kill for this special attack on Astami. Right. Like typically you're never gonna get to 54, but 151 or 54. That's just. That's just absurd. And now I have one, one, yeah, one final fight stands between, uh, finish between Burner and that is of course Champ. Champ is, I mean, ch is Champ that scary with Rapidash? I mean, I guess the thing, uh, you're scared of is similar to Mocha, funky Jesus bird stuff. <laughs> Which did happen to Mocha, so it's not the out. It's not, 
the end of the world. But remember, if you're here's a little summary. Unless you know the Pokemon doesn't have priority, if you're in red, heal. Yep. Like, yeah, if you're in red, just like, please heal. I'm not sure what the defense is for um, Burner, but I'm pretty sure it just doesn't matter. You just do the normal setup of X special defense, X speed. And if Burner knows this, you can X special attack once and go for X special attack once. Actually, wait, Thunderbolt is not quite a kill. It is a 13 and 16 at 151. So, you can go to plus 2 and then just spam Psychic for the rest of the game. Sorry, plus 4. But let's see if Burna actually knows that information, because he might not. It might not be written in the notes. Because the beginner notes, for those who don't know, uh, does not have ranges written. It's written in a way so that you can finish the fights no matter what. Although I didn't think the beginner knows what happened. So this is X speed, correct? Apparently you can X special attack, but it's fine. And then you X special once, heal, X special again. You are well. You're not even just dead to quick attack here. You're dead to air, you're dead to air slash anyway because you need to set up. Well, you might not have been dead to quick attack. So if you could, if you want to go for the plus two, you could, but. You go to a plus four here, and then you can just spam Psychic for the rest of the game. I'm pretty certain he doesn't know. <laughs> That's why he went for Thunderbolt. Yeah. In fact, I guarantee that he probably doesn't know about this. He's gonna go to plus six. Okay, he does know. He does know about his special attack. Okay, that's fine. I, I doubt it. I'll be honest, I did doubt. But yeah. Oh wait, no, you're Eevee, you don't go to plus six. I'm dumb. I'm actually stupid. I f I'm so pika brained that I'm like, my god, I have to go to plus six. It's like, wait, no, bite you. You don't have to go to plus six. I'm just. Oh my, I saw the right turn. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I am so, d I am, I, you know what? I probably should retire from commentating, but I have like one, I'm, I'm at least commentating one more race. And, uh, look, if look. no one else commentate, if no one else is signing up for the other races, uh, there might be more of me, so, you know, you like you, my beautiful you, You've been here for nearly four hours. It's okay to be a little all over the map <laughs> you, know what? I'm good. you know what my excuse is it's currently 11 p.m and i woke up at six so yeah there you go perfect you know what i'm blaming okay. the fact that it is late and uh, we have a slow bro thunderbolt in. yeah yeah so yeah the run is not or well, technically the run is not over until you know the fate of black but the run is not over until thunderbolt lands on slow bro that is essentially when the run is over so this is definitely going to be a ggs Definitely, probably a 337, if I had to guess, like mid, well, high 337. Yeah, I think so. And that is going to be it for, well, it's going to be it for our Swiss round three, race nine, which is one interesting race. Mm-hmm. The early game was Mount Moon was essentially is the big highlight and the fort and the five chances, but as well as you know, other stuff. And time three thirty seven thirty nine according to what I have seen on the screen. Genius. I want to say that's a PB for burner. Uh, yeah, if like he gets in here, I think he can play the permit. Yeah, mm -hmm. assuming this is, yeah, assuming uh, the leaderboard time, this will be the new PB. Burner, can you confirm for us? Yes, this is indeed a PB. Yes. That's GG's. Yours. GG's. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
What a run. <laughs> uh, it's been a r very rough start for me. Uh, just that death on Misty just pulled me way behind. And, uh, you know, just I didn't want to... I just wanted to avoid uh, DNF sweep. Uh, mm. As I think this is... I think this is my last race. I don't think I play round four. I think this is it for me. But yeah. That it, yeah, if that is, then I just want to end on a good note and just get a, a PB for myself. And, and that you did really well. Yeah. <laughs> and like, Especially with that cracked Tommy at the very end. Right? God. Yeah. Yeah. It's been fun, you know, and learning a lot as I was going through this tournament. Uh, you know, thank you to the organizers that uh, set up this tournament. It's been quite an experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all I gotta say. Yeah, well, super happy you showed up for this, and, you know, hopefully we, uh, we'll have another one of these next year, and we'll see you then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um... Even though, you know, I'm out of the tournament, I'm just going to continue trying to get better at this game. Hell yeah, yeah. I want to see that. That's what we love to see. Yep. Yeah, I'm looking forward to you coming back next year, you know, with, with a hot sub three ready to kick all kinds of butt. <laughs> I don't know about that, but maybe a good reasonable time to just at least make the, like, every race I'm in just look very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> all right, any final thoughts from all everyone here? Like anything you want to say? Anything you want to do? Bonjour. Yes, bonjour. Bonjour. All right. Well, let's see what other races that we have uh, going for. <laughs> And as we have, we have a double whammy uh, tomorrow. We have Razor, DRAMs, and Sheep having a race to come on at 2 p.m. Eastern, Eastern Time. We have, happening a little later on PSR TV 2, we have Jay Tattles, Leggy Starscream, and Owl. Wait, who's and that? And then, sorry? Oh, wait, who's this Leggy Starscream character? Uh, I don't, uh, I have no, I, I have no idea. Me, uh, it's just some person who's done, who's submitted to the tournament. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, probably, and probably not important. <laughs> and finally, I'm kidding. And finally, <laughs> and finally, at the best time of a speedrun race at 4 a.m. ET, we have Albi, Aspect, and Yasko. What happens when you have two Frenchmen and an Australian organize a time for a speedrun? You get this. Which, I'm all for this. I'm not waking up for it, but I am all for it happening. Yes, this is, of course, it's, for you Americans, it might be called the degen time. For Europeans and Australians, it is what we like to call the early morning and I believe the late evening for Australia. I might have to double check my Australian times, I know. But yeah, that will, and... If you like my voice, I'll at least be commentating the Albi Aspect Yasko because I'm one of the few people willing to wake up at 9 in the morning to, to actually do this race. But I do want to say that if you are available, uh, there are the two races happening tomorrow do need some commentators. So if you want to, you know, commentate a run, uh, this is your opportunity to do so. Just hop, hop onto the PS, uh, no, the Let's Go Tournament Discord and submit a form for these two races, and we'll be happy to have you commentate our races. Yeah, unfortunately, they won't let me commentate any of the races tomorrow. Wait, why? Yeah, oh, yeah, because, oh, yeah, right, I'm dumb. <laughs> it, took me, it took me 10 seconds to figure that out. And who knows, uh, if no one is going to commentate these races, uh, I might be having to do overtime on commentary. Please take care of yourself. Please, I mean, everyone, su submit so we can make sure Crisis takes care of himself. We'll see, we'll see what we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, 
I think it's more. I think it's definitely more of a bigger context to say this instead of goodbye. We should say, au revoir.